This week on the Jock and Nerd Podcast, we reviewed Netflix's latest big budget actioner, Red Notice. Plus, we're geeking out over all the Marvel Studios teasers and trailers released from the Disney Plus Day event and more, all in this edition of the Jock and Nerd Weekly for Monday, November 15th, 2021. <laughs> you know who this is, and you know why you're here. You want all the latest comic book and superhero TV and movie news, and by God, you found it. Forget everything else out there. Forget all the Scientology bullshit. This is the real deal. This is the real deal. Worship at the feet of the holy trio of geekdom. The Jock and Nerd Podcast. Play it. Check. Check one. All right. This is Roy fans out there. Let's give it up. What's up? What's up? Hello. Welcome. Welcome to the Jock and Nerd Podcast, where we give you comic book and superhero TV and movie news, reviews, and whatever we choose. Jock and Nerd. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the jock. He's the nerd. And joining us, a fellow who was recently voted Sexiest Felty Alive by People Magazine Puppet Edition. It's Rug Boy. What's up, you sexy fuck? You can just call me Paul Rugg. <laughs> Paul Ruggs. Oh my god, the joke writes itself. And I <laughs> absolutely com- I, I completely missed it. Paul Ruggs. Oh, sexy. You're, you're usually alive. better than that. I know. I you know, I, got, I just I know came we up have with the that. same hair, do Imran. You know, I see the resemblance actually. Yeah. You almost look like a puppet version of the Paul Rudd. Yeah, if you knock that all of his You're kinda like a albino version of Luis. Oh, from uh <laughs> From, from Ant Man uh, and the yes. Wasp or, or uh, Ant Man, what's that actor's actor's name? Oh, no, I can't, I can't remember. Now, now you got to look it up. Um, I guess funny is the new sexy though. Anthony, is that what uh, Paul Rudd being voted sexiest man alive? It's, I think this is a trend you, right now. You know, you always, you know, when you're on the on the apps, girls always put on there a way to my heart is to make me laugh. So I guess that's the thing now. I mean, look at Pete. Oh, Dav- that's the secret. Pete Davidson's Rod's roster is very impressive. Uh, that's all. I'm- yeah, now he's with Kim Kardashian. Yeah. But he heard that he has a huge penis. That might be why. Not he's that also he's got butthole eyes. Funny. Michael yeah. Pena. Michael Pena, Michael Pena yeah. is hilarious. Oh, my God. That's I, you. Yeah. I just got to be like, oh, my God. I saw this guy swing around on a web, right? Then all of a sudden we were over here. You just Yeah. You got to tell this n- non-secular story. Uh, no, I'm not. I'll leave, I'll leave that to Michael Pena. Yeah. yeah. You, you'll just make like references that only people over the f- age of 42. I know I'm understand. here making like punky Brewster and Alf jokes and perfect strangers jokes. And nobody knows. That's why, that's why our average target audience age right now is like 52. Speaking of SNL, let me bring up two <laughs> things before we start the show is, um, did you see that their their thing on Joe Rogan? Oh yeah. He was, uh, <laughs> Pete Davidson played Joe Rogan on SNL. Okay. It was kind of funny. It was, yeah. Did you think it was funny? I thought it was kind of funny. What they do reenact like a podcast bit? No, they just he just walked out and he was chewing like ivermectin. Yeah. Like, or, okay. <laughs> no, it was the Sesame Street sketch. Remember Ted Cruz's Sesame Street? Wasn't that the one he was on? Yeah, Ted yeah. Cruz's Sesame. Because the whole every they hate Ted Cruz hates Big Bird now. Another felty, another puppet. For, uh, Does he? Why does he hate because Big Bird? Big Bird was telling the kids to get their vaccinations? Yeah, this is nothing new. <laughs> I, that's what I tell the kids, I said you should inject yourself with anything you want, kids. Listen, Sesame Street has been promoting immunizations since the seventies. It's a show for little kids. Kids got to get immunized before they go to school. They've always tried to soften it for the kids to get their shots so they can go to school. This is nothing new. Big Bird sold out. Big Bird's always trying to inject kids with with something. Yeah. If you know what I'm saying, I heard I heard they evicted <laughs> Oscar the Grouch because he didn't want to get back. So they kicked him out of the fucking yeah. rugs. There's a garbage can open on Sesame Street, by the way, if you need a place to been crash. there already. I Big already Bird's been on there. a ton of drugs already. Right, anyways. So. Oh, yeah. He's always he's high as a kite. He's all high. The time. Yeah. Jesus. So I don't know how credible Big Bird really is. Like he depending on how high he was and what strain of weed he smoked. <laughs> Have you seen his heroin buddy snuffle up against that? You dude? ever notice how his arm is a little gimpy? Yeah, that's from the from drugs. All the drugs. From yeah. all the drugs. Yeah. Oh, but hi, bird. Uh, <laughs> Snuffle up against is always on smack. People are like, what did I just tune in? Fucking into? nodding out. Sorry, we don't mean yeah, to. You, 
Hey, is this the episode you submitted to that guy that reviews podcasts? Because this we're getting an F. Okay, yeah. let's listen. Get to the content, you bastards. <laughs> the jock. It's a nerd. bunch of inside oh, jokes, goddamn. It's not like we had. Oh, have tons of shit to talk about. Uh, last Friday, Disney Plus Day. We told you about it last week. Oh my God, lots of reveals. Geek boner. But before we even get to that, I have an update on the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. Geek boner. Is it out yet? Not we watch yet. it. So, w- oh. but the time. Here, let me explain. I'll set it they're up. They're fucking us. Is basically what's going to happen. Yes, they're fucking us again. Over the weekend. They confirmed the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer would be released Tuesday, November 16th. We are recording this show Monday, November 15th, so that's tomorrow. God damn it. However, how will it be released? Apparently, it's being released at an in-person event in Los Angeles at the Regal Sherman Oaks Theaters. 5 p.m. I guess you just show up. Doors open at 4. It says trailer launch fan event. With big surprises, Regal Sherman Oaks. This is a really weird way to debut a trailer, first of all. Uh, second of all, we don't know. At the time, we did not know when the trailer would be released online. Well, today, Sony Pictures UK Twitter account tweeted. They gave us another poster, which you can look at if you click the link. Uh, and the tweet said, trailer Wednesday. And it's coming out early in the UK, December 15th. It's coming out the 18th here in the US. So they get it a few days early. So, listener, this is just to explain by the time you hear this, you will probably be able to watch a new Spider Man Home, No Way Home trailer. This is why we're not talking about it now, but we will discuss it next week. Should we speculate, or because it's by the time the show comes out, people will already know what's going on? I mean, I think there's no point in speculating because the people will know what's happening. Uh, I will say th- guess the big what's the big, the big question would be what's the surprise right yeah who are the so at the fan event we'll find out who are the big surprises is it like is Toby and Andrew going to be there are they going to show up at this are there going to be cameos and the, all the whole cast will be there I would think so I think that's got to be the surprise so right is, are they in the movie I think so I think like 80% they're in the fucking movie and are you going to be upset or crestfallen if that is not the case Oh, yes. that's a even good though I question. Be. I I will be even though I shouldn't be because fandom has willed this so much into existence that it's like that. It's like Wandavision, where it feels like fans wanted things to happen, so Mephisto! they wanted everything to play out the way <laughs> they wanted it to play out, to the, according to their theories. And but the only thing is, in this case, we are getting some villains from previous movies back. So it's like okay, well. We're close. We're right there to getting those other guys back. I mean, mm-hmm. how disappointed will everybody be if they if they're not actually in the movie? Even if they don't tell us in this trailer, you're gonna have to do it at this point. Otherwise, it'll be the biggest fucking blunder. They could have announcements. Also, could be a big surprise. Like, then there's a Spider-Man announcement that he's coming back to Sony or something. What, I don't know. What if instead of the Spider-Man, you got the Eternals show up? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Everyone would be like, yay. Lame. What the fuck is would, this? Uh, w- if it's not it's the Spider-Man, <laughs> if it's not the Spider-Man or the Eternals, <laughs> what would suffice? Would it be... Captain Marvel? No, like, definitely not Captain Marvel. Would it be... <laughs> would people get all pumped up about Tom Holland? Not, or Tom Tom Hardy being in it? Would oh, people get shit, pumped up maybe, about... Yeah, Tom Hardy would be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw something online... Yeah. Aaron Taylor Johnson as Craven. Oh, fuck, is he in the movie? Ooh. Or like someone someone else big as a different villain? Ooh. I don't know. What if Michael Keaton's Batman's in it? <laughs> yes. It's that'd a be, crossover. The, they're with showing the, Flash. the wrong movie yeah. at that point. They, Wait a minute. Ezra Miller shows up. What? I'm at the wrong venue. <laughs> what happened? Uh, again, you're going to, listener, by the time you hear this, you're going to know it's going to leak out the minute this fan event happens. You know, people are going to get on the internet. In the meantime, we do have this poster, and it's okay. It's it's we got Spider Man in the Iron Spider suit. This time, Doctor Strange is behind him, looking over his shoulder up into the sky. You got the Alfred Molina arms. You got the city folding over itself in the little mirror universe, and then the same uh, Sam Raimi Gomblin way in the background, still there. So here's the thing: you want to talk about this once it comes out, listener? Here's a couple of things you could do. You could join our Facebook group. Somebody will definitely post it. There'll be a lot of discussion. It's called Jock and Nerd Nation. 
all the listeners hang out there and it's a fun way to geek out and talk spoiler talk on stuff. So it's definitely going to be there. And, you know, our Discord hangout is this week, this month's hangout. I'm sure it will be a topic of discussion. What's this week? It is this week. It's tomorrow. I will, I will not be on. Oh, oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Tomorrow as the show comes out. It's this Thursday, Anthony. I will probably not. Okay, be on it. more about <laughs> more about that later. I did not put it in my calendar, you motherfucker. But I'm sure we'll be breaking it down scene by scene. Also, this allows it to be nope. get put in front of Sony's Ghostbusters Afterlife that is coming out this week. Also, so that's probably why they've timed it uh, for this Tuesday. So hopefully, it's coming out. Join the Facebook group. Talk about it there. Okay, let's get to Disney Plus Day. Big two year anniversary event. It's the Disney Plus's two years birthday. And they put out basically, though, all it was was this one video, right? Am I right? Did I miss anything? There was like a Boba Fett thing. Oh, there happened. was that too. Well, We're going to talk about they the- put out a bunch of an announcements, but it wasn't like a live stream. No, it wasn't anything. a live stream. The main thing was this video on Disney Plus, Marvel Studios, and Shang-Chi. D- yes, and Shang-Chi and IMAX Disney Plus Day special. This video, if you haven't seen it, it's 14 minutes. Half of it is a recap of the four Disney Plus MCU shows. So right. it's a little disappointing, but it was kind of cool to go through the shows because I did want to watch them again. But this kind of got that done. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember all this. Those are fun shows. And then they showed a bunch of new shit. So we will discuss them in the order. They showed it. The first thing. Was this extended clip from Hawkeye, uh, which is getting a two episode premiere Wednesday, November 24th? You get really? to watch, yes, the first two episodes. Uh, this clip has a, a pretty cool car chase scene. Anthony, let's start with you. What did you think of the Hawkeye clip from Disney Plus? Uh, I liked it. You know, I, I mean, it does seem very street level. Just like it should be, right? The the hearing loss thing. I I had to do some research on that. That's from the Matt Fraction. Uh, yeah, run. So I, I didn't read that that run, yeah, but it's um, a good run, and he does have hearing loss. I've heard really good things about that run. I I do like Haley Steinfeld as an actress. I wasn't expecting, as we as we saw in the first trailer, that this was going to be kind of a Christmassy tone, right? So overall, I think I I, I do like it. You know the the chase scene as is didn't like hype me up even more but i thought it was solid so uh, i love that chase scene i love that it was filmed the camera went inside the car and the camera is in the car with them swinging yeah. around i love i thought the action looked great rugs what'd you think of the clip and that specifically the way they shot that that car it's chase like extraction scene? yeah it was running me a lot of extraction. A little bit. yeah it was pov i i thought it was fine it wasn't like it didn't blow the doors off me. I wasn't like, holy shit. But I was like, all right, this seems like they, uh, they're they going for, like, you know, action buddy comedy thing. And I'm into that. So a lot of this straight from the comics. So the Dodge Challenger, the tracksuit mafia, there is an issue. The whole issue is this car chase scene that they're doing here uh, where the tracksuit mafia and those trucks. And like They call each other bro. Yeah, right? they're like, hey, bro. Hey, bro. And they're just these annoying fucking. I can't wait to hear what kind of accent they had because I always kind of imagined. I don't know what kind of imagined I, accent I imagined in my head, but I imagined them having some kind of like Eastern European accent. I think I don't know. Did, did you read the entire Matt I Fraction? I have it. Run? Yes, it's very good. What is the premise? Uh, he's uh, again. He suffers hearing loss, and uh, he meets up with Kate Bishop, and they fight these uh, this tracksuit mafia while he's just trying to like. Hey, it's lo- it's just like it's like an indie comic book where. Uh, one thing leads to another. His brother is involved in this, and I don't think we've ever met his brother, but his brother is a big part in the comic book. Like, he has to help his brother. He's kind of a fuck up, I thought. And Kate Bishop is, from what I understand, she's, her parents are crime lords, right? Or crime bosses? Yeah, I think so. Her parents, she comes from a crime family, and she's like... And I think they're going to do some sort of dichotomy where Hawkman's like the working man that came up but then Kate Bishop is like also trying to be like him, but she's come from a privileged family. Hawkman is from a different universe, though. Not Hawkman. It's Hawkman. <laughs> Did I say Hawkman? Say Don't Hawk. ever correct Fuck. Anthony when he says something wrong. Look, we the need Furman to keep this from going. Dune also yeah, great never. Character. Yeah, just uh, always <laughs> let him do it until he yeah, figures you, you it should, out. You should definitely should just not correct me. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, no, I. This got me more geek boner for this fucking geek show because boner. I love the style of action. I love. 
Kate wearing the Ronin suit, and she's talking about how she, she, you know, once she put in the suit, things start to make sense. And then the whole end of the scene where they're fucking swinging and jumping on the train, this shit looks dope. Looks dope. Remember, we will also, we're going to see Echo and Florence Pugh, Yelena Belova, who has been uh, sent to uh, find Clint, Countess Valentina, told her Clint killed Natasha, so she's coming after him. Hmm. I don't know how much of that they they they're going to reveal. I'm actually this. excited to watch this. So, uh, yeah, too. actually, the more I think about it, the more I I think I will probably enjoy it. I've and I, the, from what I've seen online, the first two episodes that people have seen, are they everyone's saying it's pretty good? Yeah, it's getting like Hawkeye's good not my favorite character, yeah. but it seems like since they they're not super and they're not. They're just going to go straight, like, you know, street level grounded. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah just like a cop show or something, you know, like or, or good, like action show, like my, you know, Hawaii Five O. Yeah, like something. a crime show. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, Iron Man wasn't anybody's favorite character. It was very small. And now look at him. They're good at doing that. And I can't wait to hang out with Clint Barton for six episodes. All right. The next thing they showed was a quick exclusive from Moon Knight. Oscar Isaacs playing mercenary Mark Spector, uh, who has multiple identities and disassociative identity disorder. Rugs, what'd you think of this one? What they showed? It piqued my interest. He, he does come off as crazy, so that's good. There was like an English accent in there. Yeah, so it's cool. You hear him. You hear two voices, and it's kind of like. Him as Mark Spector and him as Moon Knight talking to himself, I think. It would have been awesome if he would have had like a Borat voice. <laughs> it's a me. <laughs> Chair is nice. When he's Moon Knight, he just sounds like Borat. But he's just Moon Knight, like, very nice. How much? Uh, but I, It's like you like to make crimes. You like to make, I stop you making crime. You like my white suit. It's a white. It's a very white. Well, he does have multiple identities. That's right. Uh, Anthony, what do you think? You get the old, you know, he has that line where he's like, I can't tell the difference between waking life and dreams. And there's a lot of reflections in this, you know, alluding to he doesn't know who he is. Yeah, I I haven't read a ton of Moon Knight, but I know he's got, as you mentioned, multiple personalities. He has different uh, aliases, Mark Spector, Stephen Grant, Jake Lockley. Just looking at the trailer, this seems a little bit closer to the tone we saw in the Netflix stuff, Fuck which I'm yeah. all for. Oh my and that God. one shot where the camera pans to this long hallway and it's just darkly lit and yeah. you see Moon Knight beating, beating someone beating some dude to back. death or yeah. whatever. Like I think the idea of this hair this this character and he's you know, he's he's kind of nuts and he's got all these different layers to him and, and you know, he's not exactly a uh he's not exactly as the straight you know, on the straight and narrow. I think all that stuff even though I haven't read the comics, I think that's all really interesting and Absolutely. different for Marvel. Yeah. Different from what we've seen as far as characters on the big screen or on the small screen. So I'm just excited to learn about a new character that's completely different than anything I've ever seen and, and I don't have a ton of knowledge on. So I, I, I like the way that it was I like the way it looks in these in this thirty second clip. Looks different. You get a quick faraway shot of him running, jumping over rooftops, his cape in the background. They they leaked the shot of him in the costume and he's like kind of like dressed like a mummy. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's they're they're going with the fist of Hanshu, the Egyptian um kind of lore that is where he gets the powers from, the Egyptian god. Yeah, he's connected to the Egyptian the gods. Moon. Yeah, that I don't know if that was a recent that wasn't like them a, a few years ago they had a Moon Knight book and then, and he's got another costume where he's wearing a white suit. But man, I love this darker tone. It's absolutely getting close to that Daredevil. I was like, whoa, this is fucking dark. I heard a rumor that um, what's his name? The guy who's running Disney now is trying to uh, negotiate some kind of area where the Disney could be a little darker. I, Bob Chapek, right? Yeah. Yeah. I heard Chapek wants to talk to, wants to talk to Faiji being like, uh, do we always got to do the kid friendly, family friendly thing here? Can we? Which is interesting. Either uh, Faiji is going to be on board or he's already playing this. Well, like the the kids that grew up watching these movies now yeah. are, um, I mean, Shang-Chi, you can't watch unless you can read <laughs> for half the movie. <laughs> for the beginning. It's, it's, yeah, because like, yeah, the first like 10 minutes of the movie, you have to be able to read to see what's going on. So 
I don't know if we have to worry about kids as much. No, they have something for every demographic, really. They they hold get you as babies and they hold on to you your whole yeah, that's, life. That's what it seems like Marvel is trying to do. If we once we get to some of these other shows, some of these other shows are definitely like geared towards kids. Right. This one this one was surprisingly dark. All right, let's get to the next one, which was a sneak peek of She Hulk. This is gonna be a legal comedy. Jennifer Walters from the comics, Bruce Bruce Banner's cousin. And in the comics, he gives her a transfusion to save her, and it gives her uh, Hulk powers, except she can control it and be smart and likes to be big and green. Uh, Anthony, let's start with you. What did you think of this one? Tatiana Maslany. Amazing. I love her in the lead role as Jennifer Walters. Not particularly a ton to chew on here. You you do get to see full CGI Hulk and her interacting. She's like in a basically like a glass cage that looks built for the hulk yep yep a throw they get you a little throwback clip to the 70s show where she makes a reference about being angry i love you that it's weird uh, i don't really know what to expect i've heard that she hulk is a is more of a kind of a comedic comic like a little bit more fun not yeah. as like down and and weary as the Hulk she, comics usually are she was breaking the fourth wall way before deadpool yeah, she was yeah. talking to the audience when john Byrne was writing her in the 80s um it was like a you know girl power you know, woman strong woman that but talked about like her her sense of humor and how she saw the world and everything and i think this is going to be the same thing because that's the most famous run of she hulk is that john byrne run yeah. so um I'm, I'm sure that they're going to pull from that so yeah for 30 seconds but it's still a couple of interesting things like i love how she's doing yoga right in the beginning she's doing <laughs> upward dog but i imagine this is how she calms herself Possibly, possibly, to, you know, to not fucking Hulk out. Uh, and then that scene where she's in that container. Oh, and they give you a nice ass shot of her as she Hulk from the back. It's the camera. Yes, that's oh, yeah. that looks good. Slowly pans up. I was like, wow, that's what she's going to look like. How big does she Hulk get? So, I mean, at, so what they're showing you there, there's also another quick shot of her stepping out of a limousine and you see, you know, her leg through her dress. She's a, I, like, I would say like seven, eight feet, seven and a half feet bigger. I would say just about seven. Yeah, about seven feet. Hmm. And Tatia Maslani is tiny. If you, yeah, you know, a, she's, yeah, she's so a small, small. lady. Uh, if you notice, wait, last time we saw Bruce uh, in uh, the post credit scene for Shang-Chi, he was Banner. He was human Banner. His arm was in a sling. In this clip, he is Smart Hulk, and his arm is not in a sling. This is either it happened before or he fixed his arm, and now he's the Hulk again. I don't but know. Why wasn't she in the Civil War? Yeah, where was she? So, I mean, uh, I mean uh, uh, Endgame. The, Endgame, yeah. Maybe the powers didn't manifest. Maybe they weren't working. Well, aren't the, she gets the powers because he gives her a blood transfusion. Yeah, in the comics, that's how it works. Yeah. This one looks like Maybe he's, she got snapped. He's doing it. Maybe she got snapped. Uh. This one looks like she gets the powers maybe in this thing through this, uh, this container. I, I heard that this was supposed to be like a crime procedural. Obviously, we didn't get get to see too much of that but uh yeah i mean i i wouldn't say i'm like super hyped about this one but it's again it's another character that i don't know a ton about so in that sense because i don't know a ton about the character i'm it makes me a little bit more excited because i get to learn about some character that i've never really met oh she hulk is a great character and you know there are people a lot of people are saying it's going to be like ali mcbeal kind of uh, comedy show but here's the thing about that 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 reference to the 70s show this whole scene is weird so it, they may have like wacky imaginations or this is like in her head because she turns to the camera she goes don't make me angry you wouldn't like me when i'm angry they're wearing 70s gear it's in 4-3 it looks like they're watching a tv show and ruffalo is wearing exactly what bill bixby fucking wore on the incredible hulk show i love this detail so this must be like in her head maybe or something. It's very strange. Yeah. No idea. I, I very mean, that, strange. Yeah, very strange clip. But I love that they did, did that fucking reference. It's probably going to be breaking the fourth wall like Alec McBeal yeah. and all that stuff. It's going to do that whole thing. I love they made the reference to the Bixby show. That show is great. I don't know if it still holds up. I remember it being great. It's you know what, though? I, I just wish that they didn't have uh, Professor Hulk in this. You think he's going to uh, overshadow the whole thing? I think that that should have been a thing that happened very shortly and then regular hulk wanted to come out i don't like this kind of like double hulk thing oh you want him to go back to rage hulk 
Yeah, yeah. Or Hulk from like Ragnarok at least. I well, are we ever going to get to see like a fun Rage Hulk again? I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. All right, next clip after that is a quick clip of Miss Marvel. <laughs> I Miss Marvel, uh, a show that recently they said they pushed back to. It's coming out summer twenty twenty. Yeah, now it's summer. Yeah, so it was fall, and they moved it. Back you can up, keep your pants back. on and run. It's not. It's not getting delayed a whole hey, year. Good things come to those who wait. I will wait for this. Uh, absolutely. Again, another real quick thirty second clip here. Um, but we get to see Iman Vellani as Kamala Khan. You get to see a little bit of how she gets her powers. Uh, there, it looks like they're at an Avengers fan convention, which is awesome. That's going to be fun. Uh, Anthony, what other vibes would you get from this 20 seconds of uh, fucking Miss Marvel? This one seems definitely more kiddie teenager. Mm-hmm. Seems kind of closer to the tone of Spider-Man, maybe even a little younger yeah i like that yeah that being said yeah well wow imran you like that huh no i like, I like that it's the young. tone of spider-man is what i like you <laughs> motherfucker don't put words in my mouth oh shit <laughs> that's what i uh, like <sighs> but overall i mean i actually i did kind of like the vibe i like that it's this younger kid that is getting these superpowers and um again another character i don't know a ton about yeah. so it's another character that i'm gonna have to learn about at, through watching the show but i think if they they did kind of nail if if they're going for that vibe of high school, even like junior high vibe. I think they're hitting it right there. Rugs, what do you think? Oh, I'm so excited about this. It looks so good, and it, I am just raring to go to watch this. I mean, they had praying. They were they praying. Had, they showed praying. It's I'm just praying. saying all the stuff I know Imran's gonna say. <laughs> um, this is totally funny. facetious what you say. No, I mean it looks no, it looks good. It looks <laughs> fine. It looks exactly like what I expected it to be. I so you were being completely sincere. It doesn't look bad. It looks fine. So I'm I'm excited to see what they do. I mean, with look, it. talk about representation. If the listener doesn't know, this is a character, she's a uh, comes from a family of immigrant Pakistani people, moved to New Jersey, first generation, Muslim American, Pakistani, just like me. So I'm going to be watching for do they nail the home life? Are they going to be speaking Urdu? How's the pronunciation? I love already. Why, why Urdu? Because the, from Pakistan, you're going to speak Urdu. Oh, that's right. Yeah. right. They're already showing uh, people praying in a mosque. So there's your representation. And that's her friend Bruno also from the comics when she's trying to fly. You read the whole, that whole run too, didn't the you? First, yeah, the first 15 or 20. And then they like had another run where it's a, it's a fun book. Uh, the early ones were a lot like Spider-Man. It was a lot like reading early Spider-Man. It had that same kind of adventure and fun and just teenage fulfill, wish fulfillment. Give me powers, you know. The, the only thing I don't completely get is I know she's a big fan of Carol Danvers. Yeah, yeah she still is in it, this. In the in in the comics, that kind of would make sense because yeah. she's been around. But in the movies, unless unless she was doing adventures and we just didn't know about it, right? Like, how, how does she know her? Yeah, she was around in the nineties. This yeah. kid probably wasn't born. <laughs> no, she and shows up she for came a hot back second. And she, yeah, she shows up for like five minutes at the end of Endgame. She does knock out Thanos's ship, but like, I don't know. I just don't. I I feel like she would admire a different character. <laughs> But, like, everybody knows everything that happens. So I feel like in the MCU... Anthony, every- it has to happen because they want it to happen. Yes, they, <laughs> because they wrote it that way. In the comics, it makes sense because Miss Marvel is basically Captain Marvel before Captain Marvel. She was Carol Danvers, right. otherwise known as Miss Marvel. And she's an inhuman in the comics, which is different from this. Yeah, so she takes on her old mantle, which is Miss Marvel. So obviously... It helps if she's a fan of Miss. No, Marvel but here's the thing: in this be. MCU, everybody is aware of what happened, what all the heroes That's did. True. They're celebrities, essentially, you know, in this world. So they do have arguments. I forgot what show it was or where, what movie it was. Like one person was like, "Oh yeah, Captain Marvel," or uh, I think it was Wanda. They're like Wanda almost took out Thanos by herself. Oh yeah, Monica oh. Rambeau was talking to Agent yeah. Wu, yeah, and they were talking about that. So everybody knows everything. So that's how you just write it in. Eh, she's a fan because sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'd still, it's a little of a stretch, but whatever. Uh, this, I can't wait for this. Uh, I will wait till summer 2022. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then the next thing was literally just a bunch of logos. That was it. 
just a stream of logos. But well, we, let's, let's still just bring them up, and yeah. we can give our level of excitement. There, for all and of there are some exciting things in these logos. Let's start with possibly. I think we have got the Facebook group, our Facebook group, most excited. Probably X, the all of fandom excited. X Men ninety seven. Oh shit! Geek boner. The continuation of the beloved nineties X Men series. Uh, uh, that fucking show is great. Of course. Great theme song. You're probably humming it now. <laughs> Just one, yeah, one of the most iconic theme songs ever. A show that followed the, the storylines from the comics pretty faithfully. It was so good. So this is going to be, I don't know if it's going to be set in the MCU. It is a continuation of that 90s show. Also, will they use this to introduce these mutants into live action? What are your thoughts on this? Whoa, that could be cool. How does like, this imagine, work? Imagine that the cartoon comes to life. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they're in the MCU. What? <laughs> I can see that happening. I, I have a lot of questions. But I mean, first, the this was right up my wheelhouse when I was a kid. Oh, so yeah. the, the young side of me is like, this is amazing. 90 through to 97, it ran. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so, But the thing is, is like... This is produced by Marvel Studios, so it's yeah. Is it in? Is it in the MCU? I guess with mul- with the multiverse, it could be. Is it like essential viewing to the MCU? Then the other question is like, what are they going to do with the animation style? Are they going to keep it like that? Are they going to do? Yeah, is it going to look like the nineties? Mm. What are they going to do with the voice actors? I know some of them are dead. Yeah. What storylines? Like they've there's been a, a shit ton of storylines since then. Yeah, so you could no, do those. They should get Kevin Smith to do it. Yeah, no. Kevin Smith to do also, it. Also, the la- <laughs> one of the things to think about is the last season ended with Magneto being put in the chair. Basically, yeah, yeah he's yeah. Gonna, he was leading the X Men. So do they pick it up from there? Yeah. It seems like just by the title X Men ninety seven that they're gonna keep that vibe. But like, what are they gonna do with the costumes? Are they gonna keep the costumes like? So many things. I have so many questions. Yeah, about how is, this is going to be? It's going to be Wolverine in his fucking yellow and blue outfit, like he had. Uh, this is the show that convinced 20th Century Fox to eventually make a live action X Men movie, essentially like saving Marvel Studios, keeping it going. Writing on the show is a dude named Bo DeMeo who wrote Netflix's animated Witcher spinoff, and the original show writers, I think, are also consulting on the show, but. And I think the voice actors that are still alive are coming. Yeah, back. one of the girls. So there was another article. The the girl who voiced Jubilee, she said she's coming back, but not as Jubilee. She would rather they find an Asian actress to voice the Jubilee. Oh, uh, so she'll be back in some capacity. So many questions. I yeah. know. And the the Marvel, the, it being produced by Marvel Studios makes it like just another layer of like, is this now canon? What's going on? Yeah, the fact that Marvel Studios is making this previously Fox cartoon show. Well, Marvel has all these other shows that are on you know, on Disney Plus that have nothing to do with the MCU. That's true. So, I mean, they got Spider-Man and his amazing friends. They got all kinds of shit on there. The, the X-Men is on there. These X-Men are already on there. So. Yeah. It's just that Marvel Studios title on top of it right. makes it go, oh, weird? this is now MCU produced. Well, I'm going to jump to the next thing that got me fucking geek bonus. hot and bothered was their announcement of this Spider-Man freshman year animated show. In college? No, I think. High school. This high is school. high school. This is an animated series that's going to follow Peter Parker on his way to becoming Spider-Man. They are going to do his origin story in animation on a Disney Plus show. And I'm kind of okay with that. I think that's a good idea. That's I think that's a great pivot as they never touched it in the movies which is fine because everybody's seen it they're gonna do his origin story this way yeah and i and i had read because remember in civil war tony finds him and he's been like roaming around as spider-man yeah, for a little bit so that yeah, they're gonna cover all his adventures prior to getting discovered by tony uh i'm fucking i love that rugs what do you think you think it's gonna work i don't know <laughs> We'll see. I mean, anything can be possible, right? He doesn't like it. Yeah, I'm not into the. I'm not into. I'm not into Tom Holland Spider Man. I'm just not. So I, I don't want to. If they figure out a way to make it interesting and they surprise me, sure, I'm down for that. Like you know, I'm open to it. I'm not completely like closed off. I'm just saying, like, 
par for the course. That's not Spider-Man to me. And then if they figure out a way to make it Spider-Man, uh, that's great. Look, if I'll, they could bring in the Uncle Ben and the relationship and, you know, what what he means to him. And we and if, with this one, like, if, that's what's missing. I, I really think that Spider-Man should be a period piece in the 60s. Oh, that would situation. be that would be interesting. It works great in the 60s when it was created. All these things work great in the 60s. Like, even if you did Marvels. Remember Marvels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it was like a, the reporter from the Daily Bugle, his point like of people view. People discovering, yeah, yeah, superheroes for the first time. Yeah. And they, it was just like awe and crazy shit. Yeah. So another related rumor story I found is that Spider-Man No Way Home could be followed by another trilogy oh shit you know we know the contract is up and they're gonna have to renegotiate but this is coming from a, one of those cosmic circus one of those websites here's what they're saying that they're going to do a movie in between seasons of the show that each season will fill in the gap between each movie so you would get freshman year season one on disney plus and then a spider-man four and then a second season a freshman year of Spider-Man five, and then a third season of the cartoon of Spider-Man six. Maybe there's there somewhere there's this rumor. So that if there's anything we've learned about Sony and in tandem with Marvel, Marvel and definitely Sony on their own is they will they will milk that Spider-Man teat till it's fucking purple. Well, look, here's why I like this. So I, I'm not surprised if this is true. They're saying the reason they could be doing this because Tom Holland is 25. They're saying the reason they might be doing this is they're going to fast track him to heading to college and finally being an adult Spider-Man, having him grow up pretty quick over the course of the next three movies. And so now I will get my adult Spider-Man that doesn't need anybody help, anybody's fucking gadgets and weapons. I don't know. It's an interesting rumor. I would like to see a drunk Spider-Man, but they're not going to do it. Well, <laughs> but he has a bad day. <laughs> Peter's got to get a drink, go to the bar. You never see that. That would be great. Show me that Spider-Man. <laughs> okay, so those are the two things that got me really excited. Here's all the other stuff. They had an Iron Heart logo. This, of course, stars Dominique Thorne as Riri Williams, teenager, uh, who wears uh, Stark armor. Comments on that? Nothing really, right? I'm not interested in the Iron Man unless it's Iron Man, really, or or Rhodey. You know. Well, speaking of Rhodey, they had an Armor Wars logo. This would probably have Don Cheadle returning. This, no, as this Rhodey. is definitely cool. Don Cheadle. I'll watch that. And that's about the storyline where. Tony Stark in the comics was trying to stop people that had taken over his armor. That was a, a cool storyline, yeah. There's a lot of rumors that, a lot, well, a lot of fans really just excla- or clamoring for Justin Hammer to come back in this series. That'd be the perfect series for him to come it back. It would be a great series for him to come back. And you got, I mean, is Robert Downey Jr. going to have some appearances from him? He's heavily involved in, in the storyline. Uh, you know, do you do flashbacks? Uh, I don't know. I think he's. I don't know. I don't done. know if they get Robert Downey Jr. on a Disney Plus show. No, they can't even get him to voice the fucking character in the Disney yeah. Plus show. He ain't showing up. Uh, here's one that's crazy. Marvel Zombies animated show, possibly continuing the universe from the what if. I wouldn't mind seeing that with the Paul Scott Lang's head in a jar <laughs> and Peter Parker with a cloak. For me, it's a little too gimmicky. Mm. I, I think it works well as a what if. I, I, I know they made Marvel Zombies comics, but... Like those never appealed to me. Like what peeling, like grabbing one of those off the shelf. It's Robert like, Kirkman. Reading. It's Robert Kirkman doing The Walking Dead with uh, Marvel. It's just too. Um, yeah, it's just it's, just, it's like too a one-off far of a thing. Yeah. yeah, not like it's too much of a pocket universe. Like this really means nothing to anything. It's just we're having fun. But like to have fun for one episode is fine. But I don't know about a season. I don't know how long it's supposed to be. It's like I'm out of all these things, all these logos. I know you want to go through each and every single one of them, but I let's just fly through these. Okay, Agatha House of Harkness with Catherine mm-hmm. Hahn. Anybody excited for this? Eh, one? Don't care. Okay, um, <laughs> Secret Invasion is the only one I'm actually interested in, and that's even and that's not even a lot. I'm just like, I know the storyline in the comics. I know that it could be interesting to find out who's a scroll and who's not, and what Fury's up to. There's a quick shot of a bearded Nick Fury, scarred, didn't have an eye patch. Is this the real Nick Fury? Do we know where the real Nick Fury is? Because that the one we've been seeing in most of the movies has been a scroll. At some point, he became a scroll, and the other Nick Fury is hanging out in a fucking spaceship. The, the only thing I'm curious about with this is it is a big storyline, but they've the way they portray the scrolls so far is actually very sympathetic. So I'm curious to see. Like, is it a different, like a rebel faction of scrolls? You know, what, what are the implications? What, 
what characters are actually going to be in this? Well, I think been ben, uh, ben Mendelsohn is coming back too as Talos, probably. Well, I'm saying like what oh, superheroes? Right. Yeah. yeah. Who is a Skrull? Is Sharon Carter a Skrull? Maybe she's a Skrull. So yeah, that's the big thing. Who's going to be a Skrull? Um, Echo. So we talked about Echo before and how maybe, you know, no hint of any of like the Netflix, Charlie Cox, any of that shit anywhere yet, but how maybe some of that cast is coming back. But this in Hawkeye will introduce Alakwa Cox as Maya Lopez, also known as Echo, a deaf Native American hero. And apparently yeah, we'll see how she plays out in the well, they, show. They must like her so much because she's already getting a fucking spinoff. Isn't she Wilson Fisk, the stepdaughter or something? Oh, I think she is connected to the Fisk. So, D'Onofrio, maybe? Yeah. We, you got to bring back D'Onofrio in one of these fucking things. Bring him back. I want to see him fight Tom Holland or Eddie, whoever is Spider-Man. I want to see him in all the shows. Uh, can, can I bring up the thing that I'm least interested yes, in? Yes, what is that? So you're probably going to say that next. Yes. The I Am Groot. I AD Am Groot. Shorts. <laughs> yes. Uh, no. Yeah. Series. That's, I wonder what he's gonna us. say. A series of shorts <laughs> exploring Baby Groot's early days, growing up and and budding leaves and picking fucking moss out his asshole. I don't know and getting trouble at the space. <laughs> hey, that's what I do. Does Groot just sit around and smoke himself? Like I would dry up my own leaves and roll the, it up. The and sad smoke. thing is, I'm probably gonna watch every episode of all of this. But okay, what's least exciting? Is it the I Am Groot or the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special that will be directed by James Gunn? That could be fun. Holiday specials are fun. Star Wars had one. That could, it was that great. Could be fun. They're also they didn't announce this on here, but they also there are rumors that they're doing a Werewolf by Night Halloween special. And we talked about that last week. You were here. That's I know. cool. I know, but they didn't. Like, they, oh, didn't they didn't announce, announce it, here. it here. Yeah, I'll, I'll put in order of the top out of all this shit. Wait, adding to that real quick, just to finish it up. What if season two and Loki season two? We got logos confirmation. So that's fifteen. Oh. Marvel things in the next few years just on Disney Plus. Thought. So so no, pick, pick three that you're excited about oh, over everything. Fuck me. I'm not going first. Pick three. You pick three, Rugs. Number one is Moon Knight. Okay. Number two is She Hulk. Okay. And number three is the Hawkeye show. And that's it. And then if I gotta pick a fourth secret invasion. I'm gonna go fuck. Moon Knight. Yeah. Miss Marvel. Yeah. I'm gonna go Secret Invasion as well. No X Men ninety seven, huh? Well, X Men ninety seven is like a different kind of That's excitement. True. It's like yeah. I'm just like I'm just intrigued on like what. Yeah, I guess I would throw X Men ninety seven. So in there live well. action. I mean, yes, the Moon Knight looks. I love that it's dark. Miss Marvel, of course, and She Hulk looks like a lot of fun. I mean, I think the Hawkeye show is going to be fun. Oh yeah, uh, but the, uh, it's tough to judge some of these things without footage. Yes, too. yes, and then of course Spider Man freshman year. I'm dying to see what that looks like. Uh, of course you are. But uh, yeah, this I mean, there's a lot of fucking exciting geek boner, exciting things coming from the MC. I want to see so this. I want to see some people get their ass beat. So that's why Hawkeye. Yeah. I know that's going to happen. And I know Moon Knight is going to be some ass beating going on. Everything else I don't know about ass beat. <laughs> Maybe Echo, there'll be some ass beating, but that's not coming out for a yeah, while. Yeah, we haven't even, even met Echo, but she's getting the show. Uh, okay, before we finish up with a couple of the announcements, listener, uh, if you want a jock and nerd t-shirt or a mug or a tote bag, we have lots of fun swag at our tea public shop, jockandnerd.com slash shop. Get your holiday gifts now because the supply chain is fucked, but I think tea public is good because it's a one-off one off on demand kind of shit. So you're fine. Order whatever you want. Uh, okay. Finishing up the couple of other announcements. They, uh, they talked about uh, the Willow m- movie is they're doing a remake and uh, Warwick Davis, like introduced the cast. So they're doing Willow star Wars. The only star Wars thing they wait, d- you didn't bring up the Nat Geo show with Chris, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, what, is Will that? Smith? what is that about? Do I want to, yeah, know. I, there's, I there's, heard, pi- there's a bunch of Pixar happening. stuff, cars on the road and, uh, Disney animation. Yeah, stuff, Disney animation. Disney you can look, pictures, you yeah. can look up all the other stuff. The only other stuff I liked was, uh, the under the helmet. They put out a, a, a special under the helmet, the legacy of Boba Fett. It's like a, that was cool. Yeah. It's like a 20 minute documentary explaining why and anthony i know you mentioned this but it's so funny in the beginning they're like how did this character that has four lines and six minutes of total screen time in the original trilogies get so popular and they literally they examine that they show you the the, how they develop the character and it's it's very good it's not a mystery to me it's the completely it's the costume design like i remember when i was a kid i would get marvel universe 
And I would flip through Marvel Universe, which is like the index of all the Marvel characters. Right. And just look yep. at – and I just – if I liked the guy's costume, I would look – I would find the issues and buy them because I just wanted – the costume looks so cool. The mystery of who was under that helmet was always awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that was, uh, that was that before I was into comics. It was like, whoa, that's the coolest looking fucking uniform I've ever seen. It's like fucking really evocative and it it's it's – just I, yeah, there's a mystery to the guy, and he when he walked, made spur sounds, and it was just like I love Darth Vader, and it was like the second coolest thing that I, that was on screen. The spurs, yeah, they talk about. Well, of course, it's a western; he would have spurs. Yeah, I would. That was a great special. I would recommend that. And then the other thing was this uh, special look at the Obi Wan show uh, features Ewan McGregor and returning. Hayden Christensen, Deborah Chow directing. She directed saw a lot of the Mandalorian. Uh, this is a lot of concept art, but holy shit, there is a drawing of Darth Vader fighting Obi-Wan. We're going to see a lightsaber duel again, round two, between Anakin and Obi-Wan. I can't wait for that. Yeah, let's do it. I was listening to uh, our boy John Campia yeah. while I was coming home to record this, and he was like, basically brought up how all the studios at Disney Plus announced a bunch of shit, but then he just goes, Star Wars really quiet yeah just this obi-wan thing yeah. that got leaked early and it then did. this boba fett documentary thing but like he was basically saying this is a sign that they don't have their shit together over there well patty jenkins yes. left the uh that new uh Squad, Rogue World Squadron. Squadron. Yeah. dude Rogue she left Squadron. no they uh she i don't know if she left but it got delayed reportedly i got the article right here it's happening again like we've heard this story before on every star wars movie since uh they've done well, even their shows even they're so uh, production they announced like when that investor day they announced like 10 things and i know like a couple of things came out right like bad batch and yep, that yep. that uh, anthology thing but Visions. they announced a bunch of stuff yeah, yeah. And yet to have like no footage, no right. surprising, no promotion for any of that. So stuff. Rogue Squadron uh, production delay reportedly due to creative differences between Patty Jenkins and Lucasfilm, and it's probably Kathleen Kennedy specifically. So yeah, there's again the, everything Star Wars is always such a big fucking deal unless John Favreau is involved. Well, and he, and it he works. was basically like, she's a great producer, but. Put her in charge of running a company, and it's a totally different job. And it's yeah. like so far, she just it doesn't seem like she has everything together over there. I don't know. It does seem weird that you'd have a big day for Disney Plus and not hype up more Star Wars. I mean, that's like your that's you a know, big pen, fuck up right there. Pending how uh, pending your your preference, like it's Star Wars, Marvel, Disney, Pixar, right? Like yeah, or Pixar that's a big in terms bucket. of like popularity. That's one of your big IP buckets. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, they didn't like the screenplay, so they can't even agree. On the fucking script at this point. I don't know. It doesn't sound good. Just have the Mandalorian people do everything. Yes. Have Dave Filoni. <laughs> have Dave Filoni do everything. He's the only one that gets I feel it. like more and more, it's the, like the, the Mandalorian was lightning in a bottle for them. But they still are like figuring it so out. So the other things uh, apparently on the way, Obi-Wan's going to come out. There's the Ahsoka show. There's the Andor show. Uh, and the nobody Acol cares about that. Who is, remember who is Andor? Cassie and Andor in Rogue One. Remember? Uh, oh, that's right. Diego right. Luna in Rogue One. Yeah, he yeah. spoiler. He was the most like disposable character you could ever think of. But I love Rogue One. It's a good movie. And then the Acolyte show isn't that the one where it's right from way back? Is, is that, that a one different Brie one? Larson is is the what? Brie Larson. Brie Larson. No, Captain Marvel. <laughs> yeah. No, I think isn't she the the alkalite? Isn't that the show about like the really the Knights of the Republic and shit like yeah, that? Yeah, like thousands of years ago. That was that one, right? Yeah. But I don't know if Brie Larson's in it. I heard that she was the one that was going to be the main character. Oh, oh. wow. But I might be wrong, people. Uh, you know, I hope you're breaking news right now. That'd be a, that'd be a big get. Do a well, look, little search for Kumail, Alkaline. Kumail is in Eternals, and he's going to be an Obi Wan. <laughs> <Big> crossover. <laughs> this guy. I always, I always find a way to bring up Kumail. Yes, I always find a way to bring up Kumail and Johnny. <laughs> uh, but you would have thought they would have had something with like Rosaria Dawson and Ahsoka or something. And yeah, it's weird. Yeah, some sort of or like again, quoting Campia's show, but very true. Like something maybe like Hayden Christensen yeah. and glad to be back. Yeah. Because apparently like he's Anakin in two shows, and uh, you're not making a big deal about this. I don't know what's going on. Although, from what I gather from you, Hayden Christensen was not good as Anakin. No, but he is some people's Anakin. You know, a certain generation, if you grew up, this is your yeah. fucking Anakin Darth Vader. I do. I, you know, he's older. 
I would love to see a Vader like as in, in his prime being a badass. That would be great. Oh, Rugs did find from Pirates and Princesses.net. Is this a, is this a <laughs> good this source, website. Rugs? Oh, shit. Should Rugs. I even click on this website? Pirates and Princesses. What am I going to get when I click Rumor on this? Rumor Brie Larson quits Star Wars oh, there's tits. project. There's tits on this? I don't see it. No, I'm just kidding. There's a rumor that she quit the thing. I would. I don't know. Uh, mm, I wouldn't. Oh, be, I wouldn't man, be this surprised. Is, this is a site right here. This is like back in the day when Imran used to. Find I just put. Things in, I just put in <laughs> Brie Larson Star Wars, and then that's what came up. Okay. All right. I don't know. This how, is like when I, some of yeah. our guys on on Jock and Her Nation posts like stories from Cosmic Fucking, Underground or yes, something like movie that. Movie Web or whatever. We got this covered. We got or this. You'd never have anything covered. I can find you an alternate source. <laughs> Fine. I've never. It's just I the like, interesting no, site. No, we should keep it as yeah, pirate pirates and princesses. Dot net. Shout out to that website. Maybe they'll hear it now and they'll want to. Maybe sponsor. they got the scoop. It's possible. Uh, there's one um, dork side of the forest. Is that a reliable? Uh, 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 I've heard of that one before. We got this covered. No. Screen rant. Oh. Screen rant. There you go. We got a screen mm-hmm. rant link. Okay, so to just finish up the Disney Plus day, Anthony, yeah. uh, overall, what, what, what grade would you give them? Did they, is this a good thing? Are we excited? Did, did they do a good well, job? Well, I can only judge it by Marvel. Yeah. I, I I find it odd that they have a Disney Plus day, but there's nothing like to watch. Like I threw on something. Yeah. You go. And I was yeah. like, Zhang Chi and Jungle find anything. Cruise. You could watch. That was new. Well, I'm saying like I couldn't like watch their announcements. No, it was like, a weird have, thing. There wasn't anything. It was just like Twitter reveals yeah. and things like and that. Like this one video, a couple of videos. So. On that note, not the best in terms of like if I wanted to sit down and see something. Right. I would give it though, based on the Marvel stuff. I think the X Men ninety seven is a big deal for a lot of people. Um, some of the other stuff they had decent footage for. I would give it a B. Yeah, uh, B is good. I'm definite definite geek boner geek boner material overall. So I, it wasn't really like a geek boner for me. It was more just like. Oh, there's a lot of characters that I'm going to meet yeah. that I've never met before. Well, it's geek boner to see clips of shit like the She Hulk yeah. and Mo- Moon Knight. And I love again that the the Hawkeye fucking scene in the car is so I love that action. If the rest of the show is filmed like that, it's fucking phenomenal. I'm down. What's Rugs' excitement? Oh L- yes, little to none. Char- sorry, Rugs. <laughs> well, what grade would you give the Disney Plus day? Oh my god, I'd see. <laughs> see? A C. See, C. Only makes- satisfactory. Okay, only gets a passing C. That's fine. Like it wasn't the worst shit I've ever seen, and, yeah. but it, they should have really come out. Like I wanted to see some shit. Like I wanted to be like excited, not just like teased. Because like we haven't gotten anything substantial from Disney in like months, right? So I don't know. Is this better than worse than like a di- like this year's Disney Fandom, where it was literally two it's and like, a half hours of fluff and like half an hour of shit? Yeah, it's like one of those things where like you go to a Comic Con and you wait to see this fucking trailer, and there's like. Remember when they had the Godzilla versus King Kong and it was like that one sh- two once half of a second yeah, shot yeah. Of, the, of of King Kong punching Godzilla and that was all you saw and then that's all we had to go on for like months. I'm like, "No, that's fucking weak sauce. I yeah. want to see more." But that movie was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was a theater experience. It was. It brought it King Kong versus Godzilla saved movie theaters. It's still, <laughs> It's in the top 10 of all of the 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 money makers and most of them which are not even American movies uh, oh. for, since COVID oh, came yeah. in. So just and so I know. would I would be willing to bet without looking at that list that it's it was the first one that came out out of the movies that were in the it top was ten. in the mo- when no vaccine was out right oh that's right that's, that was that's a when vaccine was, that's when it was like going into like a zombie infested world you just didn't know what was going to happen people went to yeah. see the movie if you you didn't know if you were going to come yeah up. but you were like. I'm going to risk it to see Godzilla versus King Kong. Yes. And I saw it a couple times. He saw it <laughs> four times, but Lensation saw it 36 times. Each time got better. John Bellotti walked out halfway through the movie because someone told him he should leave, even though he was enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You should probably go. Okay. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. No, it sucks. You should leave. Okay. I'm, I'm pumped. Leave. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Look, Disney Plus, they got me pumped. Disney Plus is sitting at 118.1 million subscribers. Uh, they did have slower growth this past quarter. They only got. Didn't they raise themselves a buck this past year? Oh, they did raise it a dollar, but then they were doing a special deal for like $2 for like a few months. They only added two yeah. million subscribers in the previous quarter, and then their oh, their it. stock dipped a little bit. 
Yeah, it's got to buy any dip. It was slower than they thought. <laughs> they, they, the, big dip guy over big here. Dip. I'm taking big advantage dip of the dip now. I'm a big dip guy. I'm I see a dip. dip I dip buy. <laughs> That's chewing tobacco. You got I'm a big, dip. I'm a big, big old dip guy. I'm going to put the dip in my mouth. <laughs> they were expecting $10 million and only uh, added $2 million, So, huh. wonder yeah. what. Well, oh, by the way, just uh, one quick Disney Plus thing. Yeah. I. I was gonna throw on that Home Alone movie, oh, and then yeah, I read the reviews, you, yes. and it's like I, so I heard it's bad. bad. Yeah, I heard it's like, bad. God damn it! I don't like to look at that kid. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I won't watch it just based on that. I'm like, I don't like this kid. Yeah, I think I'm Fuck gonna him. pass because I was curious, but I don't think I'm, I was curious. I don't think I'm gonna be watching but, this. But then I looked at the reviews. I'm like, holy shit, this is awful. Hmm. Speaking of awful, let's take a break here <laughs> so we can regroup and we were going to come back and talk about a movie on Netflix that stars Black Adam, Green Lantern, and Wonder Woman. How does it turn out? Find out Ooh. after this. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey, it's Brian. And it's Tony. From the Salty Language Podcast. Two friends that have been around each other for what, like 70 years or something? And, uh. We're like a married couple that you hate. <laughs> Yeah, basically something like that. We talk about, you know, just weird news stuff that happens in our life, pop culture, really anything. We just have a nice conversation and make up stuff along the way. You can find us at saltylanguage.com. For sure. And And here you'll be fine. (laughs) Well, also, you can find us on dangerentertainment.net. Danger! Watch your back! Danger! Entertainment.net, in case you missed it the first time. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Imran. And I'm Sophia. I'm the brother. And I'm the sister. And we are watching a show about cousins. We're your hosts for Dance of Joy, a Perfect Strangers rewatch podcast. We grew up watching the 80s hit sitcom, and now we'd like you to join us every week as we rediscover our love for our favorite TV cousins, Balky and Larry. You can find our show at danceofjoypod.com and on all major podcast platforms. Now we are so happy, Sophia. We do the dance of joy. Iman, this is a podcast. They can't see us. Oh, po po. Doc and nerd. Listener, if you're enjoying the show and you have enjoyed the show, join our fan club. Visit jockandnerd.com slash Patreon. Jock and nerd. Where you can support the show on a monthly annual basis. There's fun stuff you get like a bonus RSS feed, exclusive bonus content, instant reactions, mini shows, tons of shit that's not in the main feed. You get access to right away when you join and you get discord benefits. You can hang out in our private Patreon only monthly discord geek outs. Uh, It's this week. If you're listening to the show, the day it posts on Wednesday, it's on going to be Thursday. November 18th, 8 p.m. Central. Anthony will not, will be, not there. be there. Oh, fuck. sorry. Oh, yeah. That's I did put right. it in my calendar, okay. so you guys can talk as much shit as you need and want. Maybe we can get Dope Open in there, Amron. You got to contact that oh, dude. Oh, you, Rugs, you tell Dope he can, uh, I'll figure it out. Maybe Dope Hope will be there. You can ask him questions about ZBrush. Hit him up on, uh, and hit him up on Instagram. 3D man. art. We will definitely be talking about Disney Plus Day. We will definitely be geeking out about the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer, breaking it down. And probably Eternals, if you've seen Eternals, should be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. If you missed this one, there'll be another one next month, uh, every month. Uh, just stay tuned. Stay subscribed. Jockinner.com slash Patreon. Sign up right now. Okay, let's get to this week's review. We are going to be reviewing a Netflix movie titled Red Notice. Uh, disclaimer, this is not Taylor Swift's new album. Oh, was that was that her name of her album? I had noticed. Oh, I Taylor's thought it was a version. single to go buy tampons. Yeah. <laughs> well, her album. If, have you been following the Taylor Swift thing? She's re-recording all her shit because like she doesn't have access to her master track. So what? she put out an album called Red Taylor. How, how do you know about this? Because she we were just talking, we were just talking about, about it. About oh. it. She was also on You're Saturday old. Night Live this weekend, and she did this ten-minute fucking breakup song, this epic song, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on here?" Apparently, Jake Gyllenhaal broke her heart fifteen years ago. 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah, she's she's, she's still pissed about it. She's still pissed about it. They only went out for three months. She's still bitter. Oh, boy, she made a whole movie and expanded the song. It's an epic breakup. Anyways, that's not this. (laughs) What are we talking about? Uh, We're talking about Red Notice. Here are your spoiler alerts. Strap yourselves in, you fucks. Spoiler time. On Rotten Tomatoes, you may wonder where this movie's landing. Well, on the tomato meter, it is at 36%. 
so it's worse than Eternals even. Oh, yeah. More t- more <laughs> divisive because the audience rating is 92%. Wow. But uh, it's just, this is a verified audience rating for Netflix. I don't know how you verify that. Anybody can fucking put shit in here. You know, there's no, unlike a movie where you got to buy a ticket. 4.7 out of 10 average rating. Anyways, mm. uh, this is a $200 million movie that's the budget wow yeah i think this is, they said this is the most expensive netflix movie ever made it was released with a limited theatrical uh release november 5th and then came out on netflix november 12th it's made about a million and a half dollars so not big theater who is in this movie why is it 200 million dollars starring in this movie dwayne johnson as john hartley ryan reynolds as nolan booth gal gadot as a character called the bishop uh, and Ritu Arya as Inspector Das. And he also got Chris Diamana, Diamantopoulos. I butchered that Greek name. As Soto Voce. Uh, this movie is directed by a fella named Rawson Marshall Thurber. Written and directed by Rawson Marshall Thurber. He's done a couple things. He's done a, quite a few things with Dwayne Johnson. The two most notable being Skyscraper. Uh, the movie where he jumps from the skyscraper. Wasn't bad. I watched that. It was kind of crazy. I've never seen it. Never seen that movie. He directed uh, Where the Millers, and he also directed Central Intelligence, pairing him up with Kevin Hart. You, you, you literally Johnson. missed the movie, the movie he's most famous for directing. What is that? Dodgeball. Oh, he directed Dodgeball? Oh, oh fuck. shit. I, I missed that. That's right. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> my his, God. That was, that's oh, his plane to fame. That, I, didn't, I totally forgot about Oh, I love Dodgeball. I do love the Dodgeball. Yeah. Okay. So- Comedy movies, and then he kind of uh, goes into action comedy movies. I guess it seems to be yeah. the path of his career. Uh, and apparently, according to the cast of this movie, specifically The Rock and Ryan Reynolds and Gal Gadot, this movie had the biggest ever opening day for a Netflix film, which, first of all, I don't even know how you measure that. Uh, they just make that shit up. And, That's all. and they had, <laughs> no, they had The Rock, they had them. Post on social media as themselves. Wow, biggest Netflix opening day for a film. Thanks, Red Notice. The, you, I think they're just making this up, but it's possible. It's a bit. I don't know. Who knows, right? Like they don't release their viewership. Although they do do do. They now do the top ten when you go on a Netflix. But still, well, no. and this is where the the Taylor Swift joke came because he tweeted out a thing. He said, "Can't wait for Red Notice." Taylor's version was the joke. So. Anyway, oh. yeah. Oh, so, gotcha. you know, possibly all-star cast. It's going to drive a lot of people to the Netflix. Anthony, what is Red Notice about? Who Red Notice is about this thief played by Ryan Reynolds who is in competition with another thief played by Gal Gadot. And they are looking to collect three golden eggs that were made for Cleopatra way back in the day. Yes. And two are known in, in a known location. One is an unknown location. And if they're able to collect all three, they can get a lot of money. And The Rock is in the movie because he is playing a FBI agent that's kind of hunting both of these characters. Help, and I'll yeah, leave it at that. Helping uh, the Interpol agent, Das. Uh, das Boot. Das no, Boot. It's kind of like the no. fourth character. There's only four people. Okay, so... Let me just preface this by, look, I didn't watch the trailers for this movie, but I actually didn't either. Okay. So then, but then I'm looking at this, uh, the rock Ryan Reynolds, Gal Gadot action comedy. Wow. On Netflix. It's gotta be something. What could go wrong? Well, boy, does a lot go wrong. Anthony, after the movie was done, how are you feeling? You know, I'm not going to say it was like the worst movie of all time. (laughs) I'm not going to say, obviously it's not the best movie of all time. The way I felt about it was this is very derivative of a lot of things I've seen. It's just now, let's just throw in three of the biggest stars we have in movies right now, Gal Gadot, The Rock, and Ryan Reynolds. And let's have Gal Gadot ham it up. Let's have Ryan Reynolds play Deadpool. Yeah. And for whatever reason, let's put The Rock on Valium throughout the entire movie. Nailed it. <laughs> So it's basically just like three big stars in a movie that they spent a lot of money on that doesn't seem like doesn't seem nowhere near as expensive as the money that they no, say they play. Does. You got to imagine a lot of that went to their salary. I would imagine a lot went to their salary. So overall, a somewhat entertaining yet entirely forgettable heist derivative movie that you've seen better versions of plenty of times. 
Ruggs, let me ask yeah. let me ask you this. How how does this happen? How does a movie with a huge budget, three of the biggest, hugest personalities in Hollywood in a movie, how can a movie like this be so fucking dull and boring? Because it's just lazy. What that's happened all. here? <laughs> it's just laziness and it's like a combination. It's lazy, it's um a little too safe, and uh I think they're both being the same thing. I mean, by being lazy, yeah. they play it safe. Yeah. And then they kind of just go, oh, we're going to kind of make a pastiche of all these like fucking movies. And is it fun to watch at times? Is it entertaining? Most of the time it's entertaining, but only because you're like going through the motions of like whatever it is an action movie is you're just kind of like okay they gotta find the thing they're gonna get the thing he's gonna say something funny and then the rock is gonna give him this look like he wants to beat the shit out of him and then uh the girl comes and she beats the shit out of both of them (laughs) and and that's basically the the whole movie and i saw the trailer and i was like i knew the whole movie just watching the trailer with that all said I found the biggest weakness of this movie and, and actually the greatest strength at the same time is Ryan Reynolds being fucking annoying. He it's is like on super one hand, annoying in this it movie. It was so annoying that I wanted to turn the TV off at, at moments. I was like, this is, can you just not say something? Just quip after just quip once. after quip. Just show some dimension. Like just, uh, just please. But at the same time, like some of those things were funny sometimes, you know? Sometimes. So it's like, yes. So it's like, if it's, it's, I don't know. I chuckled I, maybe a handful of times. Like, what do you think was the, what did you think was okay, the funniest Okay, so the line thing? that stuck out to me that I laughed the hardest with, I think, was when they're trying to escape the prison and Dwayne the J- Johnson's like, do you know how to fly a helicopter? And Ryan Reynolds goes, does the back of your head look like a giant penis? And I laughed. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's pretty good. Uh, my, the line that I laughed, I wrote it down. I thought it was clever where they're, they're in the, um, they're in the Nazi hideout, the bunker, or yes, whatever. Yeah, and the bunker, and the rock is like, "Where is it? Where's where's the, the egg?" And and uh, Ryan Reynolds goes, "Look for the box labeled MacGuffin." Yes, it's the super <laughs> MacGuffin. So it's like almost like self aware. It's aware of itself. Yeah. He's yeah, whistling yeah. the theme to Indiana Jones while they're ripping off Indiana Jones. But it felt like it felt like he was Deadpool again. But it also felt like they he had like rewound back to his days when he was in like the National Lampoon yes, movies yes, and stuff. Yes. Like, it was like. They gave Ryan Reynolds a chance to like, or Ryan Reynolds just decided I'm going to act like I'm 21 years old again. I'll tell you what the thing is with Ryan Reynolds that really makes it annoying Mm -hmm. is that one of the reasons that I can take a lot more of Ryan Reynolds in Deadpool is because I can't see his fucking face. Yeah, like (laughs) uh, no, it's a good point. His face is so punchable, I fucking can't stand his dumb grin. And he was grinning like an idiot throughout the entire fucking film. And I'm like, he's so fucking annoying. Someone punch him. And uh, and, and, and I think in Deadpool, like, you don't get that that much because he's wearing a mask most. Uh, that's a you, good know, point. you know what I found kind of interesting, too, is, well, they were, they tried to give him depth with the dads. That didn't work. Um, it's like this buddy cop heist movie thing. But they play The Rock as the straight man. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like. In what world is The Rock ever the straight man in anything? Like, that guy is so gigantic. But you have can you, never be the straight man. You have man. to contrast with Ryan Reynolds. I did kind I know, of but, like but, the contrast. But The Rock is, like, so, like, so subdued. He's, he's fucking phoning it in. I feel like The Rock is barely in. acting. Yeah, he's, yeah, why are they phoning it in? He's fucking phoning it in in this one. Uh, why would you hire The Rock? And not have him do anything. And not ham it up with The Rock, if you're going to ham it up with it. Because Gal Gadot is singing downtown the entire... I mean, she's like playing it up like she's this cackling villain. She's having fun. And Brian Reynolds is acting like an asshole yeah. throughout the entire movie. I mean, he almost looks pained to be saying so many quips. Like, he doesn't have a chance to breathe. He's fucking quipping, uh, uh, referencing reference after reference after reference. He, he And he was doing this thing where he kept like... It's like the Deadpool thing where he kept like whispering under his breath about like little comment, little quips. Oh, yes, yes. Like, especially in the jail scene, yeah. where he's like... Oh, I hope they don't catch you. Yeah. I hope they don't catch you. Oh, he's a cop. He's, just, he's a just cop. Just gotta fill the space. <laughs> it was just. I was like, when I was watching the movie again, I I was also like rugs. Right, I, the first twenty minutes, I was like, oh, this is kind of an entertaining premise. I'll I'll watch this, and then throughout the movie, I was like, this isn't horrible, but like, 
I feel like this was just an excuse to get these three on screen, and they didn't really know what else to do. No, they once didn't they really screen. give them uh, good things to do. So, There's not like cinema happening, no. here. and I don't think, I don't think the like the three of them are are fine, but I don't think that the three of them are like amazing actors or actresses yeah, either. Yeah. So when you give them a script where they're like, it's it's really just like improv throughout the entire thing. It's like, um, you're really not utilizing any of these characters or any of these people to their best abilities. Yeah, you're doing the bare and then, minimum. And then The Rock isn't even doing any improv. Yeah. So that's like, I don't know. That's <laughs> bare minimum. I mean, yeah. Look, is there anything redeeming? It is super derivative. It- did, did any of you guys like catch the the the, the, the double tw- turn tw- like get you at all or like like we should discuss the plot a little I bit. I didn't even right? care enough to even want to know what's going on. <laughs> so explain that it's a long I was con. like are we going to get to see Gal Gadot in a bikini and we kind of did. Kinda so did. I was we like right, did. she right. looked good. We checked off I'll, all the boxes. I'll handle the long con real quick. Yeah. So as I mentioned in the summary the rock is working for the FBI but for some reason also helping Interpol. So that already doesn't make sense but um as I mentioned there there's Gal Gadot is the lead thief. She's the bishop. And she gives The Rock information on catching Ryan Reynolds. So The Rock catches Ryan Reynolds, but then Gal Gadot gets The Rock thrown in jail. So you think, oh, the Gal Gadot has just eliminated both of them. So now The Rock and Ryan Reynolds team up to basically go after the, the, the eggs and catch Gal Gadot and throw her in jail. They get all three eggs. Ryan Reynolds is important because he knows the location of the third egg. Once they get the third egg, Gal Gadot and The Rock double cross so, Ryan Reynolds because they wanted the third egg and he was the one that knew the location. And then by the end of the movie, we realize that all three of them are going to work together on something else. And there's going to be a part two. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. Hartley. It's going to be a whole thing. Hartley and the bishop. They're both the bishop. They've been working together the whole time, which on the one hand explains some of the things because you watch this movie and people just fucking pop up. Out of nowhere, wherever they are, I mean, fucking Gal Gadot flips the rock. And I was like, what the fuck? She's flipping the rock, but they explain that. It made a little more sense towards the end. It made a little bit more sense. Because she, when she gets arrested by the rock, I'm like, why doesn't she just kick his ass again? (laughs) But the one, the one, the one of the obvious many, many inconsistencies in a movie like this is Ryan Reynolds in one scene can like take out jail cell, Russian jail cell members. Like he's like an expert fighter, but then he like, other scenes, he like can barely defend himself and can't fight. Yeah, a woman. it was very inconsistent. This movie has the worst because <laughs> the script needed them to do whatever. Yeah, that's one it's of those. The types. worst use of stunt doubles I have ever seen. Like, I just did not buy that that was Ryan Reynolds jumping through these things and jumping around. And I did one of the three of them were fighting. I was like, no, like they just it cuts to the stunt person and it's I don't know what it is, but I was like, that looks different. Also, for two hundred million dollars, like there's a lot of cheapness going around. A lot of really bad green screen. Bad green screen. The whole f- they're in the Argentinian jungle at the end. And what is it with the Rock? Does he always have to be in a jungle in every fucking movie he's in? Is this part of his contract? Because it seems to be the case. But that jungle, like that's his set. They had to film most of this in Atlanta. They are on location a little bit. The the the, the bull arena and the train yeah. is such bad green screen. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. With the CGI bull that runs at him, I'm like oh my he god, gets what is going by on? A bull, and then they just effortlessly like float over the fence. That like the, this does not work. Like it was all bad, and the fucking fake plants in the fucking jungle. Well, you just don't know the tone, right? Like yeah. you're like what the is rock this? just got gored by a bull. A bull. And he's fine. Like, if this was Fast and Furious, maybe we'd accept it. But for this, we're like, so is this a cartoon now? Like what's going on? It's a that's a cartoon. Like that's that would happen in a cartoon. Yes, it's absolutely cartoony, but it's not even fun. You know, it's bad because it opens with clunky exposition voiceover setting up the whole thing right away. I was like, oh fuck. This is what we're getting into. And yeah, it's derivative of you got your Indiana Jones, your national treasure, a little Jason Bourne. Well, what's his name? Mummy. Ryan Reynolds is like humming on Indiana Yeah, Jones, he's whistling. They're literally, they're, I know, it's they crazy. reference <laughs> everything, like Game of Thrones, Jurassic Park references. He's like, no, this is the watch from Pulp Fiction. Like every fucking thing is referenced for, and it just falls flat. It even gave me a f- out of sight v- uh, vibes with the uh, oh, yeah. Clooney and Jennifer yeah. Lopez, but like not as not as sexy <laughs> of a movie. And the amazingly right. contrived scenes, how there's just a yellow tube slide right underneath Ryan Reynolds after they jump out of the prison and they're hanging there. It, 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 what it actually made me think about is like, Oh my God. <laughs> Netflix's like strategy when they fund some of this stuff or when they like get behind things. It's like, 
sometimes they can get behind something great, right? Like like Squid Game, which is a great show. Yeah, getting a, they're getting a season but, two. But then they get behind something like this, and it's like, do they really think they're just throwing three big movie stars in one movie with a, a very derivative, not fun script is going to work? I don't like, understand. What, what is this? What what is this? And what does this say about what they think of us? Well, well, but here's the other thing: How is it that they can give us like amazing TV shows and complete shit movies? It's a huge dichotomy. Like out of the hundreds of movies, there's maybe one or two a year that's actually good. But the shows have a better track record. Because a movie is just a pastime, one and done, that's it. A show has to like bring you back time and time again. So I think that it's just a different kind of thing. It's a different kind of thing. You have more time. You can develop it. You can make room for the characters to develop. A movie's never this is just a, an excuse to get people to tune in uh, that particular day. Just some, some yeah, new shit to be there. You're right. Because we review we reviewed that Jamie Foxx movie and that Charlize Theron oh, movie, yeah, and the this old was like, guard, yeah, all these are all like the same kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. I mean, the, it's just big movie star, forgettable movie. Yeah, the the old guard had some potential, but that you know, the old guard this is better than this movie, but oh, this yeah, is miles. fucking totally forgettable and just like junk food. Like it's yeah, a movie. It's literally Cheetos. You, yeah, it's a movie you can have on and not even pay attention to, and you'll still get the fucking. It's fine. Uh, did anybody any of the action scenes do anything? There was a couple of action scenes. There, there was a couple like camera shots where it was like it felt like they were on like a plane. Yeah, there's a lot of flying would, like, camera around. Past. It was weird. Yeah, yeah. Some of that was stuff was okay. Yeah. The, the one thing that scene where they're chasing each other in the in the tunnels. And they have, you have the three of them in the car. In the bunker, yeah. And then they yeah, and the, fly out the... That one was kind of hard to follow. I was trying to figure out, like, who was on what car. Yes. Like, how they weren't falling off I the cars. I will agree. They were trying to do an Indiana Jones fucking chase scene, like, in the mines. But you, it, I couldn't figure out. At one point, Ryan Reynolds was like, on the other the car. Rock and, yeah, where are they standing? Then he jumps back. And a lot of the jumping on the helicopters just, like, physically looked wrong and bad. <laughs> and just... There was a good explosion on the bridge. Like, if you see him flying, of course, it's not him. But I, I don't know. I don't know. There's there was a lot of uh, a lot of really bad gun gun fire yeah. where they're just missing. <laughs> it was like one of those where it's like we're shooting at each He's other, right but no there. one actually gets hit by the bullets because this is a PG thirteen movie, and we're not even going to attempt to yeah, show it was anyone. Like bloodless. How about yeah. that part where Brian Reynolds takes out the Russian dude with a snowball? Oh, a he, fucking man, snowball, snowball knocks down the <laughs> Russian guy in the helicopter. That's how he gets to the helicopter. It's fucking ridiculous. And then you got Ed Sheeran for no reason at the end popping up little cameo. And I thought that part was funny I, where they're resting. I kind of laughed yeah. at the Ed Sheeran. He's like, do you know who I am? I was in Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> when he says that, when he that, says that I was like, that's actually pretty funny. And they set up a sequel. at the. It's a lot of double, triple crossing, but then Booth finds them. But, then, but they're all like together. But, well, Booth gets the one up on them and the money's gone the money's gone so then they but they need they've got another they heist need a going. they need a new heist will you be watching red notice too is my question if you force me to i, I wasn't know. gonna ever watch this uh, movie yes. but then, i thought but i'll listen. watch it i will watch it. i thought this I was gonna be with one. the cast would have been a lot better than it was if i can get through another five minutes of ryan reynolds stupid face um <laughs> i'll watch I'll ask you something. You might not have even thought about it because it sounds like you don't. You didn't put a much thought into this movie because it's entirely forgettable. But Rugs, how is this a better movie? If there is a way to make this a better movie, you, I think it's. Well, you have to write a story that's coherent. Yeah, rewrite the whole fucking story. <laughs> All right, that's like script is one. ridiculous. Um, and I think have some actual stakes. Like let people get injured. Yeah, there's no stakes. Um, you know, it just it just you can like there's. There's a movie called The Thomas Crown Affair, which is about art thieves. It's ten times better than this. Just watch that movie. And you know what do is it better? better? We should have reviewed fucking Army of Thieves. This is a the tons better movie on the Netflix that just well, came. The out. thing too is like you mentioned stakes too. Like the the whole premise of the thing is like you catch Ryan Reynolds and he's going to escape. So it's like okay, well, even if he gets to jail, he's never gonna he's gonna get out. And then it's like each of these characters just magically a pops up all the time in this in the scene where they think they've one up one up. So it's like they're, it's like trying to play this game of like one up of one up one upping each yeah. other and like being smarter than the other but the other person's always smarter. So it's like okay, now it's just like 
it's it, it's like to a level where like no one can outsmart anyone <laughs> like, because they, they have every trick in the yeah. book. If I was 12 years old, I probably would have enjoyed this and I didn't watch any other movies <laughs> like, you know, yeah. I'd probably be like, all right, this is fun. But like since it's you're watching it and you're like, you're just reminded of movies that did all of this stuff better. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and um, yeah, that's what it is. There's like to- so many better movies. The only thing that the only difference between those movies and this one, besides that it's very lazy, this movie is that you have The Rock, Ryan Reynolds, and Gal Gadot in it, and then those those are the that's what makes it different, I guess, that dynamic. But um, because all of these other movies kind of like like Romancing the Stone and all these and Indiana Jones, like the star is the Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones, you know what I mean, yeah. and. Mm-hmm. So it's it's kind of a different thing. Like they kind of embody the characters. These are like they don't embody anything. The the characters are just them. Like the rock's just walking on being the rock. Ryan the Reynolds is just being <laughs> Ryan, Ryan the Reynolds. Ryan the Reynolds is being the Reynolds. Being the so, Ryan the Reynolds. Is being Ryan the yeah, Reynolds. And you know, the she's same. just being herself like she's being herself pretty much too. So Well, you know, the, the other thing I just thought of now is they're so they're on this like mission to steal these three things, yeah. right? But as we've kind of mentioned, there's no stakes, so there's no ticking clock, okay, right? There's no like villain that yeah. they really like. There's not like a so you're supposed to like these characters because, even though they're criminals, but yet there's no like if you just add like, hey, there's a villain that like is forcing me to do this, and I, if I get these three stones, I can get the money to get my daughter out of like capture or something. Now you like have a little bit more stakes. Now it's like they're doing this for a reason, and every time. Gal Gadot interferes with Ryan Reynolds. That's why you root for Ryan Reynolds because you know not only is like she an asshole, but like she he's going to lose his daughter or something like that. But like there's none of that. So and there's no ticking clock. It's just like we got to get these three stones to get it to this girl named Cleopatra because it's going to get us a great gift. And then she doesn't give a shit about them. I know. Like, <laughs> she's like, oh, Ed Sheeran. Ed yeah, then they, then they just throw the whole injury. premise out the window and make an Ed Sheeran joke. Well, that was like. Uh, it was an Ed Sheeran joke, but it was also a joke on us for watching the fucking yes, movie. These things mean nothing, actually. <laughs> like, yeah, the whole com- I guess it was kind of like a millennial, like a Gen Z yeah. joke. Like, oh, yeah. look at these awesome things. And he's like, she's just like, oh, Ed Sheeran, I want to do a TikTok. <laughs> but yeah, it was kind of a joke. I mean, on they us. tried to do the thing with their fathers, you know, so you learn a little bit about Ryan Reynolds' father, but then the Hartley story is all probably bullshit when he reveals that it was bullshit, but he does say his father was a crook, so he wanted to be a better crook. I, w- yeah, but you don't. I mean, you just don't no. like it. You, you don't. You don't actually feel don't like care. that is weighing on none of their nope. personalities. Nope. Nope. It is just soulless and flat. Uh, let me ask you this: it, How's the Rock's career doing? Is he still a valid action star? Like, why is he doing something like this? Is it? Is this? Is it? Are we at the end of his career? I mean, the Rock has tried like everything. He was Hercules that no one watched. He was yeah. uh, this and that. I mean, the most successful stuff is like the Jumanji shit that he does, pretty much. When the the fa- when he got into well, fast should he five. take and up Vin Diesel's public uh, invitation he, to he return? He definitely should go back to that. to the Fast and Furious. We'll see how Black Adam does. Ah, from. that's true. That could be the thing now. Like he doesn't have his franchise besides that Jumanji. That's his. That's his that's big his bread thing, and butter. Yeah. yeah. So um, his career is a franchise his in a weird place. I feel like the sheen is is not as shiny on him anymore. But then Black Adam will be huge for him then. Well, you just it's not like for whatever reason this this film maybe and maybe some of the other films he's just like not coming off as charismatic yeah. as it used yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, that's what I noticed. Well, here's the deal: like Arnold, right? He is like the only archetype that we can have for the Rock. Right. Basically, yep, yep, right? Yep. This, is, this is what we got. Arnold, like, he went from being uh, the Terminator, like, saying monosyllabic things or whatever, to to kind of trying to be in a comedy with Danny DeVito being monosyllabic. He was trying different things, And then yeah. he tried to do, like, a movie where he was, like, a, a very, it was very dark and monosyllabic. So, like, he was, he was stretching as far as he could go, or Arnold, you know? And then he was in Jingle All the Way. So he t- he t- went all over the place. And so I think that at a certain point in time, you've seen him, The Rock, do all of the things The Rock can do. And then you're just like, all right. I've seen um, it. Yeah. And, and there's a thing, too, where it's like, it's tough to get immersed in a role The Rock is doing because he just, he looks like The Rock. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah you know, like his look that. isn't going to change from one yeah. movie. He's this gigantic human being with a bald head. So you can't you can't get immersed in the role. They kind of made a joke about that in the movie 
where he's like, you don't look like a profiler. And he's like, I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like he works really well in Moana because he's doing a voice role. Yeah. He can, yeah. you can just, oh, you, you can forget it's The Rock for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, maybe more voice voiceover roles, Dwayne. Maybe that's your future. Well, he's a big Black Adam guy. So we'll yeah, see. we'll see. The Black Adam could either make him or b- rejuvenate his career, and now he could be this dark anti-hero. He, but, makes, he makes like three or four movies a year. Jeez, what is he working on here? Let's have a quick what, look. What's the best rock thing that you've ever seen? A Fast Five. Him in Fast yeah, Five? The, you just you just cast him as a fucking Terminator. Basically, as the like... An, a, like a cop terminator yeah and it, and the, and it's just building up to a showdown with another big fucking guy yeah he was great in those um i mean i'm looking at what, like his other stuff i mean rampage was nah, it was, it was more about the animals did, did you watch the jungle cruise i did not i haven't watched that yet either skyscraper is a better movie than this it's not bad there are stakes did you watch baywatch no, i have not seen the baywatch rampage was all right Rampage, you didn't, you didn't need him in Rampage, though. Is he in the second Jumanji movie? Oh, yeah, he's in the he second is, one, yeah. too. I got to see it. I haven't seen that. He's in a toy- Taylor Swift video. Oh. He's got ballers. What about G.I. Joe? Yeah. G.I. Joe Retal- he's just the same guy in G.I. Joe Retaliation. What about Sa- San Andreas? They're working on a sequel. I can't believe How does a sequel forgot- to San Andreas work? I thought there was an earthquake. I can't even find him. the movie that I really like him in. It's not even coming up. <laughs> Uh yeah. Uh, he was in a movie. Doom. He was in a <laughs> no. He was in a movie with um with Sean William Scott. Oh, the oh, rundown. Walk walk tall. The rundown. Oh, the rundown. That was my favorite. The rock. What about movie. walking tall. Those were fine. I mean, those were like he did both, both those like, back to back. Kind of uh, yeah, same like actiony. Yeah. Run the rundown wasn't bad. The rundown actually Sean William Scott's kind of acting like. Ryan Reynolds is kind of acting like how Sean William Scott was acting in that. Exactly. Movie. <laughs> but the, the, who was in there? That what's his name? Walking the, the the karate guy is in there. Oh, he's the um from from Sidekicks or whatever. Oh, Ernie Reyes Jr. <laughs> yeah, Ernie oh, Reyes Jr. Ernie Reyes Jr. I love Ernie Reyes. Jr. He has to fight him on the ropes, dude. I wanted to <laughs> learn karate kicked. because of Sidekicks and Ernie Reyes Jr. when I was younger. Yeah, The Rock's just been in a lot of movies. I think it's like his strategy. It seems like it's just I'm just going to be in as many movies as possible. I'll do anything. Yeah, I'll do anything that makes me just as a tough he's guy. He's literally been the same guy yeah. in every yeah. movie. Yeah, it's been. That's I think that's part of the even the tooth fairy. Like, wh- where guy. do you think he stretched the most? Is it he was in Be Cool? He was stretching in that movie. Yeah, I guess Be Cool. I mean, Doom. He ends up being a, a villain, which was kind of a turn. But that that, that movie's awful. Yeah, the rundown. There it is. Yeah, Hobbs and Shaw wasn't bad, but it's the same. Who's character. in that? Is that is that a That's, Rosario Dawson's in that too? Yeah, and Christopher Walken. He did the Tooth did Fairy, which was a fantasy. yeah. He did the Tooth Fairy. That was like his impersonation of like Hulk do or Hulk Hogan doing uh that fucking movie. Oh, the, the, the Mister Nanny. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's another Mister Nanny. What it feels oh, like. he did like a journey to the the center of the earth with dinosaurs and shit. Journey two. Oh yeah, Journey. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So where does this. his career go? He's in the something called the King as King Kamehameha. It's uh coming up. San Andreas two. Doc Savage. He's gonna play Doc Savage in Big Trouble in Little China. He's acting. Whoa, he's in, doing Big Trouble in Little yeah, China. Yeah, he's gonna do the remake. He'll take probably. Oh, that's be, interesting. Be, uh, yeah, it'll be the Kurt Russell role then, there, right? Yeah, The Rock is still he's just everywhere. I don't know if he's doing good stuff. That's yeah, but is he still doing good stuff? Red Notice clearly is not one of his better movies. All right, enough about this fucking bullshit movie. What would you give this uh, a rating? Rate this movie, Anthony. What would you give it? Five. Oh, shit. Okay. Not, Rugs, not horrible, yeah. but not, yeah, not yeah. great. Just forgettable. Yeah. Rugs. Oh, I'm going to say the same thing, but I'll, I'll go 4.75. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I was, uh, I'm going to go the other way at five and a half, but it's a big woof for me. Uh, it's uh, just uh, junk food and you forget You'd about it. You'd almost rather and, it be like, uh, more terrible yeah. just so we could have more to talk about with it. Yeah. I just, it's fine. It's a, you know what? Like it's, <laughs> I can't even give it a five because a five means it's an actual film <laughs> and it is a movie. And it does have high production value in places, and it is fun at some in some instances. 
So, hey, I'm sure that you can watch it and have a good time. It's just for me, it was Ryan Reynolds was just annoying the fuck out of me <laughs> and The Rock was just not impressing me. So it's like, you know, it was one of those things. Those are your two leads in the in the buddy cop film. Yeah. Yeah. Does this work as like a throwback kind of movie to the dumb fucking buddy cop movies, uh, you know, from maybe the 90s? I or- think if they get a, a better writing team and they can solve a lot of these problems because they have money, they have the uh, the actors can carry these roles like they could be these. So this people. is all on Ross and Marshall Thurber then. Well, yeah, I, I just think it's the script. I was thinking about like my like fun buddy cop movies, and I was thinking of like Rush Hour and Forty Eight Hours, and Lethal I'm, Weapons, and Lethal Weapons, and I'm just yeah, Lethal Weapons. <laughs> yeah, plural. Yeah, uh, and I was just like. Yeah, this just doesn't compare at all. No. no, it doesn't. Did you see Mel Gibson wants to direct Lethal Weapon 5 now? He's going to be directing a new Lethal Weapon. I'd movie. love to see that. Is it going to Is he going to pair up Jesus and punch his pilot? <laughs> I that would just, be amazing. <laughs> I just want to see Danny Glover like going in there and go, I heard you said some things uh, that I aren't people. <laughs> oh, my God. What'd you say? What'd you say, Mel? How old you, is Danny Glover? But you know point? what? Okay, speaking of how old. You he know was what? saying I'm too old for this shit yes. in like, the second movie. Do you know oh, the craziest thing? When Danny Glover says, I'm getting too old for this shit. He was 42 years old. I am older than he was in that fucking movie where he's like, I'm getting too old for this shit. I, <laughs> and fucking 30 years later, he's still saying, I'm getting too old for that shit. He's, to get, he's getting too old to shit. I can't believe he was only 42. <laughs> didn't, I need a colostomy. Didn't they that. make a lethal weapon like TV? Yeah, they did. There is oh, a TV show, awful. yes. That's not very good. Also. No, it doesn't look yeah, good at all. No, no. It, it had some problems. I think I got canceled. Anyways, there's your Netflix fucking... Uh, garbage there. We do one of we do at least one or two of those a year. Yeah, we got that's what they give where, us. We, now. Where they give us this like popcorn to just like chew on, and we're like, oh, this is kind of stale. I'm waiting. I mean, yeah, I didn't even. I thought it was gonna be a good action movie. I'm waiting for the next extraction, which may be extraction, extraction two. two. The yeah. next, the next extraction may be the best fucking thing. Uh, okay, let's do some news from the nation. <laughs> It's time for news from, from the, the nation. nation. It's time for news from the nation. <laughs> it stinks. It stinks. It stinks. <laughs> Oh, that butthole really, oh, really boy, you blew, uh, loose blew at the something end. out on that one. You may have to get some padding or something. Uh, okay, so I got a link. I got to get a tux pad. <laughs> oh, remember tux pads? You light a match. Yeah, what <laughs> were those? What was tux? I, I remember tux. There, it's like a hemorrhoid yeah, pad. Yeah, it was like a hemorrhoid pad cream bottle. that cool, had a cooling effect. Yeah, I guess they, they still put, make they used them to put out a match or something. Yes, in the commercial, they would hold it up and put the match out, and then they want you to put that on your asshole for some it's reason. Just, it, it's effective for putting out the fire in your asshole. That I was <laughs> the analogy. I remember those weird commercials, and I was always like, what the fuck is this for? I was a little kid. I never understood that. Well, I didn't know what hemorrhoids were. So anyways, we're well, not talking about tux pets. We're <laughs> talking about an article, Blake Braden. Can you uh, shared. in the when you put the podcast together? Can you put like what we're talking about? This like graphics of tux, of tux pads. Yes, yes. With the flame, okay. <laughs> listener, you'll be looking at the tux pad commercial if I can find it. Maybe you remember this. Anyways, Blake Braden shared this link. The headline of this link is uh, the uh, the article is Ridley Scott calls superhero movies no fucking good and boring as shit. Oh shit. Okay, not surprising. Okay, but then Blake Braden commented. Before we get into the article, what he said, he goes, Ridley Scott, I present you Exhibit A, Exodus Gods and Kings, Exhibit B, Robin Hood, Exhibit C, D, E, and F, Kingdom of Heaven. And uh, oh, Kingdom of Heaven was good if you got the extended if cut. You got, that's what I heard. I heard the theatrical cut was was You could huge. also throw in his latest Alien movies. Well, yes, you could throw it on. I don't think Prometheus. so. I think Prometheus is well, good. But, but the, yeah, did he do the last Alien one? He did Covenant. Ugh. He did Ugh. Covenant. And that's fine, too. It ties up the story. But It's just been done again. It's the same fucking movie over and over again. And, well, the thing is, it's there's so much more on the cutting room floor of, of, of the lore there that needs to be addressed. I, I don't know what it is with Ridley Scott. He always has to fucking recut his movies and, like, Put shit that he cut out because he for some reason cuts things out to keep things mysterious, mm. and then you got you, you lose everything. But um, 
So here's what he said in the, the interview for uh, with Deadline promoting House of Gucci that's coming out later this month. That's his latest film. He, he says, quote, almost always the best films are driven by the characters. And we'll come to superheroes after this if you want, because I'll crush it. I'll fucking crush it. They're fucking boring as shit. Their scripts are not any fucking good. And he goes, I think I've done three great scripted superhero movies. One would be Alien with Sigourney Weaver. One would be fucking Gladiator. And one would be Harrison Ford. Uh, what's the movie? He says they're superhero movies. So why don't the superhero movies have better stories? I mean, I you know, a- Alien is great. Gladiator. All I got to say is. It's, uh, it's pretty it's good. Is There's a movie coming out or that already came out called House of Gucci. This is like par for the course for all these guys now. Yeah. So when they have a movie coming out, they go, you know what? Oh, yes. How do I promote my movie? I'm going to shit on the MCU. This is how you get attention this, to this your like, movie. What, didn't like Dennis Villanueva do this? Scorsese. Scorsese they all had it. movies yes. coming out yeah. when they did this. I always forget. This is the marketing strategy. It is just shit on superhero movies and, yeah. and you get so people I, talking. I, I don't take much. I take it with a grain of salt at this point. Look, when Ridley Scott. If you're if you're gonna sit there and go, oh, really? Scott's made some bad movies, okay? But he's also made some fucking amazing films that have influenced the entire genre of everything that we talk about. So the last duel so, uh, came out this yeah. year that nobody has seen. It stars uh, Matt think, Damon. I, he definitely has made good. life like great movies. Yeah, I think it, I think the the argument though is that he just hasn't made a ton of good ones since, like. Well, I've heard that this le- that this last duel was actually very good. I heard good. the last duel was good too. Like nobody saw this movie. Ba- hmm. No, no one saw yeah. it. And I think that, that is uh, good reviews. Yeah. So I heard that that was a good movie, and that was recent. He made a movie about uh, I forgot what it's called. Hold me. The Martian is was, late, what I thought was the, the best. Le- best the Martian was best great. Of recent yeah, that's films. Daryl K. asked what was his last actually uh, good all movie. All the money in the world was a good movie, and it was based on a true story. Oh, I didn't even know about that. The Martian is great. Yeah. Um, Black Rain. Come on, um, oh, fucking, fuck. that's a great Black movie. Rain with, uh, the Duelists were great. That was a great movie. That's like an. That's one of his first movies. This nineteen seventy seven. Uh, he, Blade Runner. He did do Black Hawk. Blade, Blade Runner and Alien are like yeah, and I guess Gladiator. And people still use the design from Legend as the devil uh, with Tim Curry is fucking. It's like that's burned to the skull of so many kids. Like so. To say that, like, he hasn't, like, influenced. No, he is majorly oh, influenced. Things. Thelma and yeah, Louise. Just, he did Thelma and Louise. That's a yeah. good movie. But then, yeah, you get into stuff. Black Hawk Down. You get into stuff like Alien Covenant and Prometheus. and But then he's got the Martian I think it, the big. I think that the biggest misstep that he, American Gangster was, that was a good movie, too. Um and they're not all the same kind of movies. They're all different. He did Matchstick Man. Oh, he, that's he's the going Frank to, Lucas, Denzel Washington about Frank Lucas. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he yeah. goes all different, different genres. I think that the biggest misstep, misstep that he made, other than Robin Hood, which is kind of like lame, um, is that one where he did the one about Egypt, Exodus, Gods yes, and Kings. That was a big fuck up. That's uh, a big fuck up right there. He could have, ca- if he would have just cast it different, the movie would have been fine. Yeah. And no one would be commenting on it, but because you can, he cast him, he cast it wrong, and um, now you have something to fucking really rail against. But like his movies are not terrible; even his worst movies are still good. They're still always visually interesting, for sure. Too. Yeah, so that is true. I don't know. I can't. I'm not going to throw. Look, if he makes a comment on Marvel movies, do I take it? You know, seriously, no, I'm sure he's doing whatever he's got to do to get publicity. He's saying something inflammatory. I'm sure that's the move. The fact that these movies are sucking up all the the money and all the air and all the excitement. And then people don't really have the patience or the willingness to absorb like the last duel, which is supposedly a great film. I haven't seen it. I'm going to I can't wait to see it. You want to see that. And um. And nobody went to go see nobody that. So he's probably bitter yeah. about that. He's like, you better see. The guy's fucking 83 years old. But he's, he's, and he's got two movies coming out this year, which is crazy. So he's probably like, you better see this Hachal Gucci, you fucks. He, <laughs> and just think about it. The guy who did the Mad Max film. Yeah. He was George fucking Miller. old as fuck, yeah. too. He's a wild man. So they could still make awesome movies. Ridley, speaking of what they're working on, Ridley Scott working on another alien prequel. I think he should really stop with these alien prequels. Oh, know. isn't the... Oh, is it, oh, he's doing a prequel. I thought yeah. there, was, and there was a TV show that they're doing too, right? Oh, I don't know if that's actually going to happen. Yes. Yeah, they announced it back on the Investor Day, and it was like the guy from uh, 
Fuck, I forget. Some guy from a good show is doing. Be going to be the showrunner. He's also working on Gladiator Two. So that's interesting. Gladiator Two. Yeah, but Russell Crowe died. What are you going to do? Did oh, I read the, the script for that. His proposed Gladiator Two. Yeah. What is? Well, how and do it, you do this? Well, I don't remember it fully, but I just remember it being wild. Like it's like, from what I remember, I think it's like there's like heaven and hell, and oh. he's and and oh, he comes uh, back from the dead. Yeah, and there's like all this like gods and like yeah, like it's Whoa. it's like a lot more mythical. Wow, that's it gets completely really different. fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's a different tone. <laughs> that than, sounds fucking bonkers. Than the first one, which is like a historical bi- epic a biopic. Uh, well, it's okay. kind of historical. Yeah, it's it's kind based of. loosely on Spartacus and some other. I know shit. Jim uh, Jim McPike, our resident historian, uh, thinks it's highly inaccurate. Uh, yeah, it's very yeah. inaccurate. But so is every fucking yeah, movie. So it's especially Exodus, gods <laughs> and m- monsters. Yeah, of yeah, course. Gods and kings. But um, n- Prometheus, funny thing that Prometheus is considered to be a shit movie when Eternals is like literally lifting Prometheus. Uh, it's very similar. You are correct about yeah. that. I did so, get Prometheus kind of vibes. Supposedly Eternals is the most talked about film and so deep. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, Prometheus kind of did. The, the only problem with Prometheus for me is it had – Great ideas, similar to Eternals. Yeah. Very good ideas that, like, but didn't pose any answers to any of those questions and right. kind of dropped it by the third act into, a, like, a horror movie. Yeah. 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 And the thing is, is that there is, he did fucking actually film all that shit. And it's like, and and Chloe Zhao definitely filmed all that shit. It's just, why did they edit it that way? Mm, yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's one of those things that just mystifies me. Uh, I think that they don't. And not only that, but there was that that uh, HBO show that just came Raised out. Raised by Wolves, that yeah. That I found to be very interesting and, you know, the first couple episodes. You did direct two of those episodes. I, I did. I think just for Prometheus, not to make this a whole entire Prometheus discussion, but I think my theory is he filmed everything. And I think the studio was like, we need this to be like a bit closer to Alien. Like, how are we, who is going to watch this if you make it the way you want to make it? So we got to throw in like the horror thing and like the 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 origin of like the chest burster or whatever, whatever was happening in that third act where it was like, it became alien esque. Yeah. And there wasn't no alien before. The- well, it was just, it was just like a, de- a weird show. Cause you have all these questions about the creation and then you don't really answer it. I think the Deacon was, was dis- a disappointment in the alien factor. Yeah. That was the only alien in there. I think that if he would have switched that out and not, and made it like, a regular alien or something that's a little bit more less lame looking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, alien covenant is literally the same alien movie, same third act, same gets pushed out the fucking airlock ending. that They all have. I think that one, it was just, he is like, okay, you want me to make this closer alien? I'll make it like more like alien. I'll but make then, alien again. Fuckers here, but yeah. give me money. Anyways, Ridley Scott getting some press. Uh, the other thing I have in news from the nation is an email. From our listener, Joe Henry, my vitiligo brother from another mother. Oh, yeah, vitiligo oh, dick. Yeah, old vitiligo dick Joe Henry. Oh, I'm Jesus. sure he loves that nickname. <laughs> uh, it, me, him, and oh David Desmalchin and Joe Rogan. We all have something in common. Joe wrote in regarding uh, our Star Trek Wrath of Khan review. He says, thank you for reviewing this film. One of my favorite Star Trek films. And he's also like a big Star Wars fan, so I love that he loves both star franchises uh he says two things one i spoke with christy alley a couple of years ago about the wrath of khan and asked her why she wasn't in star trek 3 the search for spock i said i was disappointed to see another actress in the role she said quote it was because of some crazy contract negotiations so i inferred she wanted to be in it her agent was probably asking for more money and due to the decreased budget they decided to recast her role sadly so Christy Alley was out. And then two Wait, second, I just I just love the yeah. subtle just name drop. Oh, by the way, I'm just speaking with Christy Alley. Yeah, I, he spoke with Christy Alley at some <laughs> point. That's amazing. Did you ask her about look who's talking and cheers also? I, I want to know. I, I want, next time you write in, Joe, just drop, keep, just make this a thing and drop celebrities you've, you've spoken to. I was to. texting at Ridley Scott the other day. He listens to <laughs> your show. He's not happy at all. Uh, and then he says, second, he says, it's not in the theatrical cut of the movie, but in the director's cut, the young engineer that died was Scotty's nephew. Why they cut that from the theatrical release, I don't understand. Uh, and mm-hmm. he says, however, I thought it would be cool for you guys to know. Still love the show. Your longtime listener, Joe Henry. Thanks, Joe. I have you. Uh, I kind of want to watch Star Trek three and four now, Anthony. Have you had a itch to go finish the trilogy? No, no. no. Okay. 
No, but I mean, hey. it, it's a good movie. I just don't have the itch to finish it. Okay, let's just. I got an itch, but not for that. I got a fever. I use usually. I usually use Gold Bond when I have Gold one. Bond. <laughs> really works. It's time to use some if, Gold okay, if you, Bond. If you shoot that thing straight, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, it let's, helps with chafing. Let me just let, tell you. Yes, that. chafing is a problem. Let's finish with uh, what are we watching? Anybody, Anthony, watching anything? I threw on the first episode of Narcos season three, Mexico. Oh yeah, Narcos Mexico. Uh, I, that's all I've watched. Okay, so I, and I forgot a lot of it. So yeah. I guess more to come if I decide to keep watching it, which I eventually will. Other than that, just a bunch of uh, screen crush on YouTube with uh, Marvel theories and and things. Oh, they did the a Eternals. nice. Like, yeah, they did like Stuff an hour discussion with uh, Nando vs. Movies and Patrick Willem. Yeah, I watched and some I, of that. It's good. I thought it was very uh, very interesting how they broke down the movie and some of the issues with it. A L- lot of great conversations about that movie online. Rugs, you got anything? Oh, yeah. I watched... Uh, the biggest thing that I watched was the reissue of Rocky versus Drago. <laughs> Wait, what is this exactly? It's an extended right, director's so, so- cut or something? So Sylvester Stallone decided that he was going to re-edit Rocky IV right. because he he's, has a new perspective on it now, and he wanted to re-edit it. So he Stallone uh, recut it himself. And huh? I guess he wanted to do something during COVID because he couldn't film or anything. So he's like, I'll just do this. I'll just fucking re-edit this movie, and I'll have something to do, something to talk about. How is it different? Do my time. Um, basically, they cut out all of the robot stuff and all of the poly stuff okay. with the robot. Mm. Um, and they used like, basically he used different takes of all basically the same stuff, oh. different angles, different shots. Huh. Uh, there is a con, there's a couple of conversations with Apollo that are different uh, where he's talking to Rocky about doing the fight and whether he's going to do the fight instead of, I think Rocky was like washing his car when they, uh, and they were talking to him on the phone. In the old version and in the new in the new version, they're actually Apollo's at his house and they're you're having a they're having a sit down hmm. about this and uh, there's more um, there's more of Adrian there's like forty minutes of unseen footage in this apparently whoa yeah there's, yeah. there's um it, but most of the unseen footage is just different, different shots takes. Of the same okay, thing okay. Oh, okay. different takes like where like even in the montages they put different stuff in the montages. And uh, whatever, it's like one of these movies. It's, it's tough because I've seen Rocky four like a bajillion times. Right. Like the rule in my house is if Rocky's on, you leave it. <laughs> like if you Don't are the if channel. you are surfing and you hit Rocky, you it just you you just got to stop and watch it until it finishes. And so I've seen Rocky four like untold amount of times. So that movie's burned into. So it's, it's very jarring when something doesn't go like you like want it to, and yeah. you're waiting to say this line, yeah. or you're waiting to fucking see this cue that or this music cue. Um, I found it very jarring, um, but it does give me a little bit more perspective on on the film. But I would not, I would not like. I I wouldn't like if I had to choose between the two. I'd I'd go with the original. So it's he didn't Every, improve the movie. It's not a better version. Like there's it's less it's less like a, a kitty movie. Less like a superhero like film. Yeah, you know, like like the the original, it's like so like montage, montage, right. montage, yeah, right. it's like, yeah, yeah. quick edits. Yeah. Like it's just very, very this one there's like it, it lingers a little longer. There's different takes that aren't and it's not edited it's together James as Brown flashy. Still in it? Oh yeah, oh, he's in it. You can't cut out the James Brown. Jesus. I think the fight between Drago and Apollo is cut different. Like all of the fights are cut different. Like there, th- I think that there's more punishment that Apollo goes through, and there's a couple of more shots that Apollo gets in, so he doesn't go down as easy. Uh, I think there's a longer thing where he tells Rocky he not to stop the fight, no matter what. Even if he dies, he doesn't give a shit. This is how he wants to go out, and I think he condensed it like down. So even though the movie's only a couple of minutes longer, like he like. It's what's in there that's different. Is it so, worth a rental? No. Okay. Good. Don't do it. Okay. I mean, if you uh, if you have to see it, like I already had to see yeah. it. I was like, I gotta fucking yeah. see what he did. What he did. 
I was so fucking curious. I was like, oh, I want to see what he did. It was interesting. I, I, uh, Rocky IV is like one of my favorite all-time movies, oh, especially no as way. a kid. Oh, yeah. yeah. As a kid, that's like, that is the movie. I don't think you'll be able to stomach it. Yeah. <laughs> because it's not that it's bad. It's just that it's, it's not what you're used to seeing. Right. You're going to feel like something. Like when you love something that much, you don't want anybody fucking with it unless it's better. So my solution is like. Add the footage that you that like. I think that there's a there's a movie where without the robot, I think the like taking the robot out and the comedy out does make it a more serious film. Um, but um, it doesn't make it better. Mm. So it's it's like yes, it's like you can be like, oh, it's not as cheesy as the old one, but it's still like the old one's fine. Yeah. So I I the uh, Rocky Four is one of my favorite movies ever. There, there's two quotes that from that movie. Yeah, there's the one where he's speaking to Adrian, and he's like, like she's like trying to convince him not to go to Russia, and he's like, to beat me, he's gonna have to kill me, and to kill me, he's gonna have to have this heart to stand in front of me, and to do that, he's got to be willing to die himself. And I don't know if he's ready to do that. I'm just like, that's fucking amazing. I would like <laughs> that, and the lot, and the the scene where they're like fighting in the ring, and he hits him with like a right hook or a left hook, and he he. Drago is bleeding, and he, and uh, Rocky goes back to the corner, and he's like, and the 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 trainer's like, "See, you cut him, you hurt him. He's not a machine. He's a man." And then I, and Rocky's I remember like, that. "No pain, no pain, no pain, no pain." I was like, "Oh my god!" So yeah, those are those are quotes that I've like <laughs> stuck with me all my life. Yeah, and then that and that's in that's juxtaposed with Drago going, "He can't be human." Yeah. And yeah, yeah Rock. Yeah, he goes. He says something. He says it in Russian, but he's like, he's not a human. He's like a piece of iron. And it's like, yeah. And just, oh my god, there's so like, it, it's just, pretty you, epic. It's pretty. I mean, it's it's entirely unrealistic. Like, yeah. Rocky gets knocked down like twenty times in the film, and they they would like stop the fight after like twice yeah, of that. Right. But it's such an epic yeah. film. Does, it's this, uh, does it's this the biggest re- joke film too of the Rocky series. Are you but it's such curious an epic film. about this recut? Then would you uh, check this out? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> just because it, it just, I'm, it, I know it, I probably movie. won't like it. Yeah, you're probably not gonna yeah, like it. I, 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 like I, I tell wanna, you, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I'm happy that I watched it, but I don't. I, I still don't know how I feel about it. I feel like it's, as I said, this is one of my favorite childhood movies, and it's just so ingrained in me. Like, it's just odd that it's not like. I think maybe it would have worked a little bit better if he didn't like uh, mess like. Like messing with the fights, I think was fine. I think some of the stuff that he did with the fights are actually pretty good. Yeah. Mm. But the montages didn't work as well. Mm, the montages so are I, a huge part of the Rocky series. Yeah. So most of that movie I, is fucking montage. Yeah. Oh, they go into two, right? They go from one to the other. Yeah. It's like all montage. Hearts on montage. Fire is a great song. Living in America. Yeah, I always remember that coming out of that. Oh yeah, and you just you're just dreading because you know Apollo is going to die. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in that, really in that scene, you see more of Drago. If he during living in America, you see like his perspective of what it's he's just seeing. So funny, Stallone is just bored, and he's like, "You know what? I'm gonna recut this thing. Fuck everybody." He just wants to do. <laughs> well, something. I think, I think that he had some scenes that he wanted to like do that were a little bit more. Oh, there's another scene that I have to talk about is when Apollo dies. There's there's an extended Rocky speech. And then there's like a speech from his coach that, that dude. Oh. From all that. And he says some crazy shit too, about being a warrior. That's kind of like, Oh, that's a good ass speech. Huh? So, uh, that was cool. But other than that, like, I don't know. I'm like, I don't know if I would choose it over definitely not choose it over the original, but I'm happy that I saw it just to get a couple of, uh, just to, just to see what the fuck, you know, Stallone was thinking about. You know, why did he want to do this so <laughs> he bad? He bored. I just think that, that personally, I think he just want to take the robot out. Yeah. Mm. And um, Stallone, we will see. He will be returning as Stockar Ogord in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Mm. And then Expendables 4. <laughs> it's filming right now. Expendables 4? Yeah, he's filming Holy both shit. of these things right now. So Stallone, still around. Um, I got a thing. There's an animated show that's kind of funny, clever premise called Inside Job on Netflix. I watched some of that too. Right? Yeah, I, it's kind of fun. It's uh, the premise is great. You follow this girl who works at this company called Cognito Inc. And basically, 
it's hilarious. Anthony, you know, like all the conspiracy theories regarding the government and aliens and lizard mm-hmm. people, they're all true. This company manages it all. They're in charge of keeping everything secret. Uh, on the team is like a mushroom, a sentient mushroom from Hollow Earth. There's a dude like huffing chemtrails in the background. Uh, the guy who shot JFK is there. His name is Noel, Grassy Noel. He's an old guy. Everybody loves him. But it's about this company that does all the conspiracies. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like Men in Black. Kind of I like thought it was pretty funny. There's a whole episode about every how everybody is a lizard person, like all the celebrities. They show up to a, a I get to that one. It's good. Oh. It's a good idea. Hey, uh, real quick. I just want to read the cast for the Expendables 4. Oh, who is in the Expendables 4? Yes. Uh, well, Stallone, obviously. Yeah. Jason Statham okay. is back. Dolph Lundgren is back. Of course. Randy Couture is back. Oh, my God. Uh, Eddie Hall, who's a strong man, is in it. 50 Cent. <laughs> Megan Fox. Nice. Tony Ja. Nice. Andy Garcia. Nice. There's three names I don't know of. Um, and then the lead villain is Iko Uis, who was in oh, the he's raid. Playing, oh, he's from the oh, raid. He's yeah. the bad guy. He's the bad guy. I don't know. This is kind of like... You just got to set up Eco Uis versus Tony Ja throughout the entire oh, film. Oh, yeah. This wow. this seems like a uh, a depleted cast for the Expendables. Didn't it have crazier casts oh, in the did. past they, three movies? They used to, I mean, they had Jackie, yeah. Jackie uh, Jet Li in it. Jet Li, right. They've had Jean-Claude Van Damme, Mel Gibson. Oh, right. Uh, Everybody's been in Bruce this. Bruce Willis. Movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger's been yeah. in it. Yeah, this is a little bit more depleted. This is like a D string fucking Expendables lineup. If you like martial arts, those like they cast two of the yeah. two two of the names that have, were in the early two thousands. Yeah, Tony Jaa and Eco. Yeah, Jacob Skip. Megan Fox. That's all right. Megan Fox. I feel like that's a cat. Like that's ten years too late. <laughs> <laughs> Megan Fox. I, Give me trans- trans- yeah, definitely. Transformers. <laughs> Megan Fox is the one I want to see. <laughs> um, all right, that's it. Uh, out this week, you guys. Ghostbusters Afterlife in theaters only this Friday. We're gonna oh, review yeah. it, right? We're watching it. We're reviewing it. All right, I gotta buy my tickets next week. We will review the Ghostbusters Afterlife. Good. And same day, Cowboy Bebop on Netflix. Similar to Rocky Four. Similar yeah. to X Men ninety seven. Ghostbusters is a big part of my life. So. Yeah, mine too, dude. Those the first first two movies. Yeah, I uh, still I still sing the Bobby Brown sound from the oh, second yeah. movie. Uh, that, that, that song is great. And the first one I've seen, like, uh, I can't even count how many times I've seen fucking Ghostbusters. Great jokes. Uh, still was, never gotten around to the, the all women one. That one's all right. That's forgettable. Okay. Uh, what was the Bobby Brown song? It was, uh, uh, now we can it's up to oh, on a row. We're on a row. And yeah, then the rap one. goes. Uh, too hot to handle, too cold to hold. They call the Ghostbusters and they all patrol. Something yep, like yep. that. Yep, that's exactly yeah, it. Yeah, see, I fucking remember all this shit. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I do the rap of all the bad 80s songs. And they play uh, in the second, is this the second uh, one, they play uh, higher, higher, and high when they're making the fucking ooze. Oh, dance. right. Statue of Liberty. Yeah, oh, yeah. Statue of Liberty. Oh, God. And the second one is like, a repeat of the first one, but I yeah. still like enjoy watching the second one too, just because of the cast. It is great. It's nowhere as good. This is no. Back the when first the one's way better. Always got worse. Back, you know, that, back that was in when the they day. made sequels derivative of the first one. It was yeah. just like let's just do more of the first. None of the sequels are ever good. Like that only changed recently, really in the past. Because well, now years. the people they plan franchises. Yes. Where back then they made a movie and they yes. were like, oh my god, we have lightning in the one. bottle. Yeah. yeah, make another one and rush yes. it. Well, and divisive is like the Back to the Future trilogy. Like you could argue all of those, which one is the best? But that one a little more I, successful. That, the Back to the Future it's still the first one. Yeah, but I like two. Nobody likes two, and I like three. I like all of them. Uh, I like two and three, but for the one, remember I discovered this last year, so it's very. Oh, fresh. that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. What? I like them all, but I like the first yeah, one. Yeah, the first, first one is great. just as classic as the first Ghostbusters. Anyways, all that stuff. Stay subscribed. Check us out. We will review Ghostbusters Afterlife. With I can't wait to watch this Cowboy Bebop. And Cowboy be Bebop. Sexiest man alive. Uh, Rugs, where can the people find you? Sexiest puppet alive. Oh, you can find <laughs> me on Twitter at really Rugboy. Uh, give him a follow. Follow us. Visit the show notes. Stay subscribed. Share the show. Thanks for listening to the Jock and Nerd Podcast. My name is Imran. My name's Anthony. He's the Jock. He's the nerd. We'll peep you next time. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's really good. I really don't give a shit. I stick it up my asshole. Oh, gotta get one in. I fucking loved it. <laughs>